Angelica Tway are suing their former tenants, Carl and Renee Antonucci, for property damage, unpaid rent, and a bathtub. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2154, Hellerman Tway versus Antonucci. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Antonucci, the plaintiff, Miss Hellerman, gave you a job. Yes. When? It was probably February of 2021. Where had you worked prior to that? I just worked um, for myself. Worked for yourself doing the and same? Cleaning. Cleaning? Yes, and I worked for Rite Aid as assistant manager. And your husband was in prison? For a year of last year. He was in prison on a two to 10 year sentence, correct? A writer, it's called the writer program. And it's, a, it's about a one year program. You were convicted in the state of Idaho for what, sir, and when? It was uh, 2012, it was a third DUI. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you were sentenced to two to 10 years. Oh, correct, yes, my apologies. I, I just it. read it yes. online, sir. Yeah. It's not a secret, it's out there. So you were sentenced from two to 12 with a minimum of two years. And the rest of the sentence, you were supposed to be on probation. Correct. You violated the probation and you were sent back to prison. Correct. And that decision, violating your probation, you appealed. Correct. And the appellate court, the highest court in the state of Idaho, affirmed the lower court decision violating your parole. Probation, yes, correct. Your probation. And that was just six months ago. No, it was... Uh, February of 2022 is when the opinion was published. Does that sound right? right? Yes, the okay. response to that, yes, correct. Yes. So what was your release date from jail? It was January 11th. Just yes. a second. Don't answer yeah, for Yeah, January, January 11th, yeah. January 11th of 2022. Correct. Now, you had been working for the plaintiff while he was incarcerated, Miss Antonucci, without incident. That be a fair statement? You were happy with them? I wasn't getting paid enough, but yes. Nobody's ever getting paid enough. Even I don't get paid enough. Right. Everybody thinks they're worth more than they're getting. Right. You didn't quit. You didn't complain. Now, at some point, when your husband got out of jail, there was a question about where you were going to live. Were you living in the property in question before he got out of jail? No. No. So he was getting out of jail. Where were you living while he was in jail? I was in Donnelly, Idaho, in our motorhome. Is there a reason that when he got out of jail, he couldn't go to the motorhome with you? He did. And then you tell me how you ended up in their property. Sean and Joel took us to dinner, and... They took you to dinner for what reason? I don't know, just to take us to dinner. Well, that was nice. Yes, it was nice. Very nice. So, so far, you're working for people that you seem to like. Your husband is incarcerated. He gets out of jail. I assume you told him he was getting out of jail, that that's why he was around now. I assume you told him that he had been in prison. Yes. Okay. And they didn't hold that against him. They invited you out for dinner. Yes. Tell me how the conversation came up about a new place to live. We were just talking about moving to Adams County. Why? It's just a better situation. Oh, just a second. Was he required to be in a particular county for his probation? No. Now, was he required to live in that county? No, he's not, unless he puts in a request to move. And that was approved. Well, is there any reason why you put in a request to move after he was released from prison? Yes, because they offered to um, talk to Monica about a house that was coming up for rent in Adams County. Just a second. Who knew about a house? Did you know about a house that was coming up for rent? No. Yeah. I'm not getting a sense of forthcoming answers from you. You have somebody who, who cleans for you, mm -hmm. whose husband has been incarcerated, who hasn't been living in any of your property. Now he's coming out of jail, and I want you to tell me how the discussion of a place to live came up. You're out to dinner. Yes, we invited him out to dinner. We were excited to meet him. They had mentioned they had put in for a change of probation officers. So he put in a request for a new probation officer. Yes. But for the fact that you told them, they would have no way of knowing that you had to move from one place to another. You had to have told them if you put in a request to move. We no. were just looking actually, for a place actually, to live. You approached them 
and said, do you have a place for us? No, I did not say well, that. Well, then, how did it come about? There was sort of acrimony at the end of your moving out, but I'm going to take one thing at a time. They say that when you moved out, you took a claw bathtub. Did you take the bathtub? The answer was either yes or no. Shauna Hillerman and Monica Tway are accusing their former tenants, Carl and Renee Antonucci, of not paying rent and stealing a tub. We were friends, and they invited us to dinner. Just Shonda a second. and I were friends. That's yes. it. So and this they, is somebody who's a friend yes, of yours. And I did not. I cleaned her house very randomly, but I'm a subcontractor. I was not an employee. In fact, I called myself an employee of hers once, and she said, "You're not an employee. You're you're my friend. You're a subcontractor." So we were at dinner, and we were saying that we were wanting to look for a place to live, and Joel said. Oh, well, there's a place in Adams County that Monica just bought. I'll talk to her about you guys moving in there. That's how we came to know about that place. Great. And we were fine with living in our motor home, but it would be nice to have more room. So we were excited about that. That's how we found out about it. You found out about it because you needed a place to live, that you were moving. We didn't, well, That's yeah. according to your husband. As a general contractor, trying to find housing, one of my ideas was, well, let's rent a house, let's rent a place. I need space because I have trailers, I have, a, I have a flatbed, I have a cargo trailer, I have the two vehicles and the Harley, I need a garage, I need a shop, I need to, you know, expand. That's the sole reason for finding a different place. And also trying to save money to buy a home and recover and do all these things, you know, build my business, so forth. Ultimately, and you moved out. There was sort of acrimony at the end of your moving out, but I'm going to take one thing at a time. They say that when you moved out, you took a claw bathtub. I know what those are. They're sort of a decorative old piece. I've had them, they sometimes use them now when they renovate houses and put modern stuff around this claw bathtub. Did you take the bathtub? The answer was either yes or no. Yes. Yeah, of course. You say you took it in the answer. Did you have permission to take it? Yes. Yes. Who gave you permission? Monica. Monica? Did you give them permission to take it? Absolutely not. I did not give them permission to take it. So now I want one of you to tell me when the conversation took place, where it took place, and who was present. One of you is going to talk to me. When we were about to move in and doing the walk through the residence. No, just uh, not moving out. You were going to move in. And Correct. you moved into yes. the residence in yes. February of 2021? What month? No, we moved in in April. April of 2022, and you moved out when? August 21st of 2022, of course. Okay, so what you're saying, Antonucci, is that in April, now you're gonna tell me a story, in April you were walking through the premises with the owner. I was gonna do some work on the place too before we moved in, and when we moved in as some of the trade, or I would build them at a discounted rate, and uh, there was supposed to be a fireplace, a wood stove, well, really the main reason why I moved into this place is because I had a wood stove. The electricity is so hot. I, going listen to me. Going through the house. I don't care. Bathtub. Okay. I don't care about a fireplace. I well, care about a bathtub. Okay. Discussion comes out about the bathtub. She says she's not going to plumb it in. She says if you guys want the tub, you can keep it. You can, you can plumb it in if you want. But, I, you know, I'm not going to plumb it in and deal with it. Okay. So she said to you, she had this bathtub there that she didn't want to plumb in. I assume that means connect. Correct. Because of the connect to water. Yeah. She didn't want to plumb it in. You can either use it if you want to plumb it in or not. That's what she said to you. No. Not no. Yet. Only him. Have. No, if I didn't he hear. I didn't hear the word have. You want to read back what he said, please. He says, discussion comes up about the bathtub. She says, I'm not going to plumb this thing in. She says, if you guys want the tub, you can keep it. You can plumb it in if you want. But, you know, I'm not going to plumb it in and deal with it. You want to use it, you can use it. Keep it. Keep it. If you it. Keep it. Not keep it and take it away with you. You're moving in to her house. She said, this bathtub isn't connected to water. You can, if you want to, plumb it in. Because, according to you, she knew that you were in the construction business and keep it or not, but I'm not plumbing it in. And you view that four months later as saying I can take the bathtub? Yeah, there was more discussion yes, about it. No, yes. let me hear the more discussion about it. She didn't want the tub. 
Just a second. That's a conclusion in your mind that she didn't want the tub. Based upon what you just said to me, if you're moving into a house, you're moving into a place, that statement that she made could not be construed in my mind as you can have, keep, it now belongs to you, the bathtub. You can either plumb it in or not. If you want to keep it, plumb it in. If you don't want to keep it, don't plumb it in. Okay, where's the bathtub? And storage. They get it back. Five days. She said she was going to haul. Five days. Thank you, Your Honor. Five. I'll give you an order. Is that all you have to contribute to this case? Some other witnessing, but that's... Then, as a witness, you can sit down. You're getting your bathtub back in five days. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Good. Now, let's talk about the next thing, which is damages to the duplex. So they moved in in April. They paid rent in April? Yes, they did. They pay rent in May? Yes, they did pay for May. And June? No, they have not completed their payment for June. How much was their rent? 1200 a month. How much did they pay in June? They still have $80 owing, $30 in rent and a $50 late fee. Okay, I'm not interested. About July? Nothing. Was there any rent in July? No, no payments, no. Did you live in the premises in July? Yes. You were evicted on 821. Up until the 21st of August, were you living in the premises? Yes. Did you pay rent in August? No. Okay. Now you want to tell me why you stopped paying rent in July? Yes, on July 10th, there was a flood in the house. July 10th, there was a flood in the house. From where? We, we, we believe never. it was a spigot. No one we ever were... told us yeah. no, no, where no. it came from. Well, you're living there. They're not living there, right? You're living Upstairs there. Upstairs or... Just, just, I'm hey. only no. going to listen to one person, I'm not talking over each other. Is that you or your wife? Me. Fine. You're living there April, May, June. July, there's a leak. I'm living in a house. I know where the leak came. It comes from a refrigerator. It comes from a window. It comes from a ceiling. It comes from a something. Where did the leak come from? I wasn't home for that. We came home to the flood. I came home to the flood at like 8.40. Was it coming from the apartment above you? No, it was Where not. Where was it coming from? I called Monica and I said, oh my God, there's water everywhere in the house. What's going on? She didn't know what was going on. So we were trying to figure out where to turn the, the water off at. I'm still trying to figure out if you lived there in July, why weren't you paying rent? Shauna Hellerman and Monica Tway claim their former tenants Carl and Renee Antonucci owe for unpaid rent and a bathtub. Carl and Renee are countersuing for property damage and loss of income. Okay, was it coming from the apartment above you? No, it was Where not. Where was it coming from? Apparently it was a broken uh, plumbing pipe from the sprint spigot leaked okay. underneath the house so there, and came second. up through the subfloor. So there was a broken internal pipe, as far yeah. as you know. Now your husband's in the construction business, he says. So when the flood happened, did you try to find the source of the flood? I wasn't home, Your Honor. Where were you? I was at work. Well, eventually, did you come home? Yeah, I came home that evening real quick. Well, that evening, did you try to find where the leak came from? Uh, I, can, I had to get back to work. They were, she was dealing with the cleanup. The water was turned off. And they were sending a plumber or something. Okay. So Monica they, said she would take care of it, so. So they turned off the water, which is perfectly reasonable because the water is coming from an internal pipe that burst, right? And then what happened? I'm still trying they, to figure out why They did not why turn off the water until after I got home, I walked in. So I called Monica and I said, oh my God, there's water everywhere in the house. What's going on? She didn't know what was going on. So we were trying to figure out where to turn the, the water off at. Okay, so that's, that's when the water so got far, turned off. So far, 100% understand you. Got it. Came home, you found water, trying to find where it comes from. Finally, turned off the water. I'm still trying to figure out if you lived there in July, why weren't you paying rent? We were behind on rent because I was working and he was trying to get his job situated down in uh, Boise or wherever he could get contracts with his injuries. He's so what you're telling me, that you didn't pay rent in July because you didn't have the money? No, we did not have the money. Well, that's what I'm asking you. So other than the fact that you didn't have money, 
there was no reason why you didn't pay rent. We were making payments whenever we could. You and paid no payment in July. For Shauna. You made yes, no payment in July. No, in June you did. In June we did. In, July in June you did, did, not. did not. Listen. And as long as I was still working for them, that was fine when we were late or making oh, payments to just them. Just a second. You made no payments in July and you made no payments in August. You had made payments in I wasn't April, pay for August May, and when June. We had a flood. I'm just telling you. Yes. I'm asking you a question. Is the reason you didn't pay your rent because you didn't have any money? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Then you owe them the rent. $2,400. You live there. Well, Eat the minute, steak. Wait a minute, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not speaking to you. Listen, you're a tag along on this whole thing. You understand that? I think these people were very nice to you. I I'm not, I'm not probably, proud. yeah, I probably yeah. wouldn't have been yeah. as nice. The, the house, house flooded. flooded. That's why I couldn't pay the rent. I have all just the pictures. Just, just right a second. It shut my business down. It shut my business down. That it house flooded. His my plans were ruined. My computers. There was two inches of water at 1,800 square feet of flood. Yeah. Monica says she's going to come over. Don't Mr. worry. Mr. Antonucci, Monica's... you can't talk over me, sir. Well, apologies, but this is you can't talk over me. I'm older than you are, and I've lived in many apartments. And believe me, I have been the cause of a flood. And I have been the recipient of floods from people around me. Usually, it's an accident. It usually is not an on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Very few yeah. people turn on their bathtub and say, I'm going to let this bathtub overflow into my bottom neighbor's house. It's usually as a result of a broken pipe, which nobody can see, or an air conditioner plugs up and the pan overflows and the whatever they call it, the little water bug signal doesn't go blank, blank, so you don't even know that it's going off, and there's a flood. That's not somebody's fault. So now you have a flood that is nobody's fault, not yours, because you're the tenants. So clearly it wasn't your fault, not something that they anticipated, not something that they were derelict in taking care of. So now, what did they do once the initial mess was cleaned up, how did they fix it? Did they fix the pipe? We don't know. They never told us. Refuse I mean, they said that a plumber came to the house. He left a hole in the, uh, in the ceiling, which I have a picture of. Just a second. You lived there the whole month of July and into August. Did you have water? Just answer my question. You lived there the whole month of July after this happened and the majority of August. Did it flood again? No, because Just we... Not a because. It didn't flood again. And what did the plaintiff do to remediate that? Did they put in fans they and put, blowers? They put in one fan, and then she finally brought five more over. So I had six fans in 1,800 square foot house and one window that opened. We lived in the basement. So they put in fans. You said they had put in one, and she then they brought them. Up... And I plugged them in and brought them and put them on and put them in the bedrooms. In the hallway, in the kitchen, oh, living listen, room. I have a feeling that you're a victim in more ways than one. That's what you're supposed to do. You living there. It's they sent them over, check. you plugged them into the wall. That's what you're telling me? And there's also a mold in there. $2,400. You owe them two months rent and the bathtub. Let's go for next. What damages to the duplex, Ms. Hellerman? We had some drywall damages, a lot of garbage debris, large dump run. Yeah, I'm not interested couch. in that. $2,400 and the bathtub. Now I'm going to get to your counterclaim. Money owed for loss of income, damage to a motorcycle, wrongful eviction. Well, you didn't pay your rent, so the wrongful eviction is out. Defamation. What's the defamation? So Monica sent me a text when I quit working for her, and it said, thanks for dropping off the keys. I said, you're welcome. She goes, really? Thank you for giving me one day notice. No good deed, dot, dot, dot goes unpunished, and three days later, we get an eviction notice on our door. I want to know what the defamation is. What's the defamation? I Nothing. Don't. Cross out defamation. Damage to my motorcycle. Yeah, they laid gravel down in the driveway without notification, and you can't ride a 900-pound Harley through gravel. So his bike went down. $2,400, judgment for the plaintiff, counterclaims dismissed, we're done here, and she's absolutely right. No good deed goes unpunished. This court is adjourned. She definitely got to the bottom of their character. That house was a death trap. We received a text with pictures of small puddles throughout the home on a concrete slab. She didn't want to pull the tub in. She said, if we have it, if we want to use it, we could, if not, she's going to get rid of it. She's going to throw it away, take it to the dump. I didn't ever tell them they could have the tub. I told them I was not going to install it at that time and that I had already arranged to have the tub removed. I was going to store it. You know, I think what bothers me more than anything else about cases like that is that those were two nice people. The plaintiffs were two nice people. Sure. And they actually 
took a chance. They had an employee who was there for a year. Now she's got a husband who's recently released from a, whatever kind of prison he was in, but they welcomed him, they took him to dinner, they needed a new place to live, and then they leave the place a mess. They give them no notice. They just drop the keys and we're leaving and don't pay rent for two months. And took property that he knew was valuable because they moved back to their motorhome, so they didn't need a clawed bathtub, which are expensive. You but know, they, they pay for that storage. But to they keep pay it. for the storage in order to keep it. So the plaintiff. Nanette Highland is suing her former neighbor, Sahara Carrillo, for vet bills after a dog attack. For come to order, all rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2042, Highland versus Carrillo. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell me your dog's name. Faith. How old is Faith? 11. How long have you had her, Miss Highland? Since she was five weeks old. When did you live next door to the defendant? Yeah, it was across the way, but... Um, it's across? Yeah, my side of the door faced her side of the door. And there was a grassy knoll in between. Do you have a photograph of the area? No, I don't. Do you? I'd like to see it. That's mine. And this is where hers would be. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is whose trailer? Hers. Miss Carrillo. Is there a street in between this area? That's where hers would be. Right where? There, in that area where the rocky thing right after the grass. Kevin, give this to the defendant. Maybe this one's better. Where the plaintiff's trailer would be. Okay. And where hers was. This is where hers is. Would have been right here. Just put plaintiff and show me where yours was. Mine is right here. Put it down. <laughs> Let me see if that makes it clear to me, Kevin. Thank you. Yours is here, mm -hmm. plaintiff's is here, and this large grass area is a common area? Yeah. It's a common area, because you're all the way down here. This right. is a relatively large space. It's only like... I, I wasn't okay. talking to you. Sorry. Okay. And the incident that involved your pet, Miss Highland, happened on October 8th, 2021. Yeah, it was actually October 9th, after going back through the paperwork. You are no longer in this trailer park no it's an rv park but yeah an rv park how long were you there four or five months it was like mid to end of may and this happened in october and within three weeks i you got left. a place and that's your dog that's yeah. the dog that was injured that day yes and what kind of a dog do you have a visla uh, mix boxer a visla visla uh -huh. So tell me what happened, Miss Highland, on October 9th. I had gotten up and I was taking my girls out to go potty. How many of those do you have? Two. I have a puppy that's almost two years old and then Faith. So I was taking my girls out to go potty and I'd been looking to make sure that mm -hmm. the dog was inside and I didn't see the dog, oh. and it was on its chain under her trailer, apparently, because when we came outside... Nope. Was your dog on a chain? On a leash, yeah. Well, a, a, what kind of leash? This, that's, well, that's not right. Yes. This that's not one. true. Well, that's a leash. Right. That's a leash. She on, says the dog was on a chain. No. Do you yes, have... Yes, it was. I don't have shh, a chain. Shh. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a chain. Never had a chain. Uh, it's been a leash. Were you outside on October 9th at the time of this incident? Were yes. you outside when it started? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I was outside on top of my stairs. No, you weren't. Okay. You're not allowed to answer her. I'll come back to you. Okay. Okay, so you're taking your dogs out to potty. Were they on a leash or off leash? They were on a leash. But she didn't have they them. They go outside. Don't speak. Okay. They always have them on a leash whenever they go outside. Were they on a leash on October 9th? Yes. Okay, so you were taking them out, although you did say, Miss Highland, that you let them out in your front yard, is what you said, I believe, in your complaint. Let me see. You didn't say I took. You said I let my dogs out in the front yard to go to the bathroom. Mm hmm Well... When I say let them out, let me clarify, okay? I'm always with my dogs. I know that you say you were always with them. Yeah. That's not my question. My question to you was a simple one. Were they on leash or off yeah. leash? Yeah. 
Guess they, what? They were on their leashes. Mm -hmm. Be careful. You took them out on leashes in the front grass. Mm -hmm. And what happened? When we got down to the bottom of the steps, her dog came out from underneath the trailer and grabbed Faith. Well, she was on a leash. Yeah, but she grabbed her. The puppy started to go one way, and I had Faith and dropped her leash, and the puppy was going, like, she got out of my hand and was taken off, and her dog was under the trailer, didn't know it, because I had been watching to make sure she had been inside, but didn't see her or the dog out, and she came out of the trailer after the dog grabbed Faith. In what location? Did her dog grab Faith? Right by my trailer, right by my steps, where I had my steps. The chain was long enough for the mm -mm. dog to go past the tree that was right mm -hmm. there in between the two properties. And she came out and Your started dogs came right... No, 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 just, just, just... You second. didn't have a hold of the leash. You're, you're not... That's you're because, not, because the dog you're broke not so, free. Right. You want to continue with this case or you want to go? No, I want to continue. Then let's understand. We don't talk to each other. Okay. So your version of the events is that her dog was chained under her trailer. You came out with your dogs on leash. Mm -hmm. The puppy ran away. You dropped her leash. Her dog got your dog and took your dog back to her trailer. Yeah. At what point did she come out of the trailer? After the second time, her dog had picked up Faith, and Faith was screaming, and I was screaming. Okay. Miss Carrillo, have you ever had an incident with your dog before? No. With I another dog? No, I haven't. That's a lie, because you... Shh. I want you to think carefully. Have you ever had another incident with your dog and another dog? No. How long have you had your dog? Since she was a puppy, nine years, since... Uh, 2013. And this is the first time she aggressively bit another animal? Yes. Okay. You have information to the contrary, Miss Highland? Yeah. Okay. Because I when I... I'd like you to tell okay. me. Okay. When I first moved in, she even told me about how her dog had killed a couple <sighs> other dogs. Okay. Tell me about that. She just told me to make sure I was careful with my dogs because her dog has a history of attacking and aggression towards no, other dogs. No, well, those are conclusions. You first said yeah, that her told, dog killed two dogs. She and then... did. She told me that her dog was aggressive and that it has a history of killing other dogs and that it had already killed other dogs, and that's why she got kicked out of her last RV park. I've never lived at another RV park. That's, That's my first RV park ever living at. Where did you live before? At my mom's on Ming Avenue. Did you ever indicate to Miss Highland that she should keep her dogs close to her? We've never spoken prior to the incident. We never, I mean, just the maybe a hi, she just had moved in. I never spoke to her. You want to tell me your version of what happened on the 9th of October? Yes. I was outside on top of my stairs. I was sweeping. My dog was at the bottom of the stairs. I have her tied up to the stairs. There's a ring where I clip her leash to, so she can't go far. It's just this distance while I was sweeping. Would you hand that to me, please? And I can hear her dogs barking while they were inside. Would you open it up for me? Okay. What you're telling me is that this is what you tied on to under the stairs. Where did you tie it? This part right here. And then Where? I have, I have, Where? It, I have to show you how I, I have it, put it on. Can you give yeah, it back? Just let her show me. Okay. I'll clip it onto her harness, and then this would clip what onto harness? the bottom. The, my dog's harness. Are you telling me that your dog was on a two-foot lead? Yes, I have her right there when I'm right there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. My neighbor can vouch to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you did see part of this incident. Correct. Careful. You saw it from your trailer, from your RV? Sitting outside my trailer, in front of my trailer. So I want you to tell me exactly what you saw. Nanette Highland claims her former neighbor, Sahara Carrillo, owes for vet bills after Sahara's dog attacks her chihuahua. Tell me your name. My name is Garrett Newhouse. Mr. Newhouse, how long have you been the defendant's neighbor? 
two, three years. Did you see the dog on that gizmo? Yes. How far do you live from the defendant? I'm directly behind Sarah. Hmm? I'm just right behind her. Behind hers. So you face the back or the front of her trailer? The front of my trailer faces the back of her trailer. The door is the same direction towards the yard. So that you don't see her front door? Her trailer is angled so that I can see her front door. Okay. You want to tell me your version of what happened on the 9th? You could sit down. I was outside on top of my stairs. My dog was at the bottom. On the on bottom. This thing. On okay. the bottom, there's a, I have a hook that I clip her uh, leash to. And she was uh, sun, sunbathing right there. I moved her other places, but while I was there sweeping on top, she was right there. So then I hear her dogs inside that were barking. And then all of a sudden, I hear the door open and the dogs just come rushing, both of her dogs. They, were, they had leashes on, but she wasn't holding the leashes. And then my dog grabbed her dog and I yelled at my dog and whacked her in her head and she dropped the dog. And then that's when she, she was that, on her way. How did that happen? What do you mean? Your dog is on a two foot lead. You heard her dogs coming out. You were on top of the stairs. Yes. You saw her dogs, according to you, running and your dog is on this much this, this much, much, yes. No, actually, not that much, because you made a loop. Yeah, that's the way the, I, I, did, I okay. do it. Well, not I did a moment it the wrong ago, way. you made it. You yeah. made a loop, so it was on about this much, and this on much. about this much lead, your dog picked up her dog in the mouth. How many times? Just that one time, and it's this long. You can see where the the area is all dirt, where she stays on and runs around it, or misses in the dirt. The grass is still right there where it's nice and green, and the area that she sits in is right there, right in front of the, my stairs. And so your dog grabbed her dog in the mouth while close to your trailer. At my trailer, yeah. At your trailer. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you hit it on the rear end and she spit out the dog. Yes. And then? And then she ran towards her and she came towards her dog. This little dog ran towards the plaintiff the plaintiff ran towards her, and what did you do? She went to get her dog, and I what grabbed did you my do? dog. How did you grab your dog? I took her off her leash and put her inside. And then I went to see if her dog, you know, is your dog okay? You know, um, you should have had a hold of her leash. Now, know? what did you say to her when you came out? Is your dog okay? Okay. Is your dog okay? And what did she say to you? I can't remember. She was just, uh, you know, your dog got my dog. I'm like, you, how come you didn't have the leash? They were on leashes, but she wasn't holding them. And she said because of her legs that she couldn't. And I told her, then you shouldn't have dogs if you can't take care of them. Just a second. Is that what you said to her? You shouldn't have dogs if you can't take care if of them? If you can't take, I mean, they can't be loose. There's a leash law and she didn't have the leash. She had leashes on them, but she didn't have a hold of them. I'm just asking you. Yeah. That's what you want me to believe you said to her. That's what I said to her, yeah. You, you know, you shouldn't have dogs if you can't take care of That's them. That's what I said, yes. Okay. And did you see her dog injured in any way? No. Can I see the mm -hmm. records from the vet, please? Yeah. And here's even photos. And was there a report made to either the there RV... Was, oh, they... Shh! I didn't finish oh, okay. my question. <laughs> was there a report made to the RV park yes. or to the police department? Yes. May I see that, too, as well? I don't have the RV park or the police report. They okay. could not... Okay, but not they, they could not... They all over. The but... answer is, I don't have them. Yeah. But that's just photos from the injuries. <laughs> Now, I'd like to see the vet report, please. This is the neurology. This is all the other vet stuff. Don't give me a whole bunch of stuff. I'd like to see the reports and the bills from the vet. Mm. And I am correct, sir. You did not see any of this incident. Is that correct? Only the commotion no, just when, a second. The, I, when I'm she asking smacked you, the dog and... I'm at, no, 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 no. Stand up. Let's be very careful about your answer. Am I correct that you didn't see any of this incident? Only after she had smacked the dog and he dropped the dog and they were that little commotion right there where she picked up the dog and went in the house. You saw it from your trailer, from your RV? Sitting outside my trailer. So I want you to tell me exactly what you saw. Now look at me. Her. Who's her? her um, Sarah. Her picking up her dog and going back to her house. Where was she when she picked up her dog? Uh, no, I tell you what you're going to do. You're going to show me just, right here. Like halfway just between her house and my house. I mean, her house. Put a mark 
where you saw her, where she picked up her dog. Okay, okay. may I have that, please? It's right in somewhere. It's like a couple feet away. So she picked up her dog right near Miss Carrillo's RV. Correct, yes. And where was Miss Carrillo? She took the dog and let it up the stairs, put it in the house, and shut the door and came back out to see. And at that time, were you listening to what the two women were saying to each other? Not really. Were they yelling at each other or were they calm? There was yelling. So if they were yelling, could you hear what the yelling was? I didn't know either one of them at that time really that well. I, went and, I think I went back in the house at that point. There's whatever. Thank you. You've been most helpful. Okay, you have the report for me from the 9th of October? Yeah. I'd like to see it. Okay, so there was one set of stitches that the dog had. That was her first surgery. Okay, let me see the second time she was there. This is the stuff for that one. <laughs> And that's what the, why? Well, this was the day afterwards. And when did right. she go back? It was June 30th because she was having grandma seizures and they had to keep her because they had to start her on phenobarbital mm -hmm. because of the well, eye injuries and the head injuries. Well, it doesn't really talk it, about those that's injuries. That's in the pictures. It shows where her head was punctured. I see one wound. And I don't well, see no. a photo. On the picture itself, if you see her head, there's a mark right here on her head by her eye. That was a puncture wound that they had to clean out. Okay. Yeah. The defendant says both dogs had a leash on, but mm -hmm. that the leashes weren't attached to your hand. Is that correct? I honestly, I don't remember because most of the time when I'm coming down the steps, I have their leash in hand. And sometimes, like, going down the steps, I lose the leash or I drop it and they are at the bottom of the steps waiting for me because they know it takes me a minute to get down the steps. Okay. If you're standing on your steps sweeping, you see Not her okay. dogs running across, then you jump down from the step and you grab your dog. Didn't and she say that she wasn't sure if she was holding the leash? Her absolutely. Dog I, don't, I, dog. Don't answer, I don't answer your questions. Nanette Highland says her former neighbor, Sahara Carrillo, is responsible for her chihuahua's vet bills. Sahara claims her dog was tied up and Nanette's dog ran onto her property. At any time did Faith run across the lawn? No, she was right by the steps because the tree is right there. It was like in between our spaces isn't in, even as big as this, in between here and your front of the of bench. The bench. And Literally, she was grabbed right by my steps. Was any report made by you to any animal control? I'd called 911 and reported it, and they can't find the report, but it was done over the phone, and I waited for them to come out for a week, and I kept did calling you? them. But did I you? did it over the phone with them. Did you ascertain from the defendant whether her dog was up to date in rabies shots? I didn't ask any questions I was, afterwards. I was just trying to make sure and find out what was going on with her. Did anyone from the RV park come and discuss the incident with you? They just asked me what Just happened. a second. So the answer is yes. Do you have any sort of documentation of that discussion that they had with you? There was no documentation. Do you remember the name of the person that you spoke to? Yes. Are you still at the RV park? Yes. Did you tell the RV park that there was a witness to this event? No. Well, there were two different versions of the event. One says that your dog came and attacked hers, and you say that her chihuahua came mm -hmm. and was aggressive towards your dog. But you have allegedly an independent witness who saw part or most of it who you brought to court today. I assume that the plaintiff communicated to the RV park that your dog was at fault. Correct? Yes. And you say your dog was not at fault. Is there any reason why you didn't tell the RV park that there was a witness? Oh, because I didn't know yet. 
When did you find out that he had seen anything of the event? Maybe like uh, three weeks after. Tell me about that. How did you find out that he had seen any part of it? Because I was talking to him about what was going on, that she was going to take me to court, and then um, he said no, that he had so seen... Now, so now you were talking to your neighbor. Right. Which meant that you must have been at least somewhat friendly towards him. At that time, yes. At the time of the incident on the 9th of October. We didn't know each other that well. But you had lived there for a long time. How long did you live there? Since July 20. And how long has he been living there? How long have you been living there? A long time, 20 years. Long time, 20 years. So my question is, what prompted you three weeks later to have a discussion with because him? Because I started to get to know him by then. I, I worked. I worked at that time. I worked a lot. You know, so I started to uh, conversate with my neighbor. That, that's... Mm -hmm. Okay. How much were your vet bills? At this point, it's over 10000 Have they been paid? Most of them. Okay. I'd like to see the bills, the last bill. And can I say something about yeah. what she said? First of all, she was in there way before I was. She had already been there over a year. And second of all, the thing is, is she couldn't have said anything three weeks after because it wasn't after until my leg recovered from having to have emergency surgery from falling right after the incident happened that I even decided to file court papers. So the court papers weren't even filed until, until when? June. I didn't say they were filed. You said three weeks after. But anyways, oh. so, like, all this yeah, I see the bills back please. in October. Mm -hmm. And I literally couldn't get to the courthouse to be able to drive to the courthouse. How much do you owe the vet? What I've already paid is over 2000 or right around 2000 in cash that I've paid. But to get her MRI, I need to pay 3000 Just There is no nexus that can be drawn yeah. between the seizures that she's having now, other than the... Well, other, I'm speaking, other than the vet saying that it's possible that it can be caused by trauma. Yeah. That's, other than that, that's the only thing I saw there. There was right. not a full report that said the trauma that she had six mm -hmm. months before was the basis for these seizures that she's having. Seizures, she she's having 11 years seizures old. Seizures right after the attack. Ms. Highland, you have to understand that you need an expert witness that you don't have to demonstrate that the seizures that your dog is currently having is a direct result of this dog attack. Right. Do you understand? Faith is 11 years old, and I it's possible... Have the just a second. It's possible that it comes from that. It's possible it comes from something else. I don't deal in possibilities. Right. All I want to know is what vet bills the you paid for October 9th on October 10th. The actual total was 1,526.62 without her medicine being involved. Okay. Well, that's a reasonable vet bill for those two dates. She did have two different surgeries. And the medications that you're talking about were also included right. in that 1526. Right other than for the seizures that you want me to draw a connection with, with well, I'm not. And nothing more is owed to the vet for those two days, October right. 9th and 10th. Okay. Ms. Carrillo, I have to make a determination as to whether or not mm -hmm. I believe the story that her two little dogs rushed up to your dog that was being chained to a step on a very, very short lead with you standing right there. And whether or not I believe that you stood there while your dog that was on a very short lead that has never had any problems with aggression before picked up her dog twice because once she had puncture wounds in the stomach and once she had puncture wounds around the head. And I don't believe you. Quite frankly, I don't believe you. Okay. And I think you're responsible for her vet bills. I think you would have indicated... Didn't and... she say that she didn't have the leash, that she wasn't sure if she was holding the leash? Her Absolutely. Dog I, don't, my I, dog. Don't answer, I don't you answer know? your questions. <laughs> if, you're, if you're standing on your step sweeping yes. and your dog is now chained and you see Not her pain. dogs running across, then you jump down from the step and you grab your dog. That's what you do. You have a very big dog that you keep on a very short, according to you, chain, yes. and there's a reason for that. So if because you're standing over there, 
This is not a That's fine. question and answer. You're responsible for our vet bills. I believe her. One thousand five hundred and twenty-six dollars. Oh, judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. They behave like even in the courtroom. She did get bitten by my dog, but you know, you know, they listen like. If I start counting to three with them. It was about her not having them on the leash and having control of her dogs. They go and do what they're told. About her dog getting hurt. I mean, I went to see if it was okay. <laughs> because that's how she is. That if my dog bites another dog, I'm gonna have to pay. <laughs> So one thing I found interesting about that defendant's testimony was that when you were in your line of questioning about whether or not her dog had ever been in another fight or with any other dog, any interaction, she said no. I thought I remembered when I was reading her answer, she stated that she had a mutual understanding with the plaintiff that when her larger dog was outside, the plaintiff's dogs would be kept inside. Why would you need to have that sort of mutual understanding unless you knew that your larger dog had a propensity for violence towards well, other that, dogs? That's true. I, you know, I forgot. And now I, that you mentioned it. I remember that I read about this mutual yeah. agreement. I, yeah, I wouldn't think that the, she was afraid that the chihuahua would attack her dog. Probably not. Probably not. A suing fellow motorist, Robin Major, for scooter damages after Robin hit Matthew Scooter. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case 2197, Cleofer versus Major. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You were riding a motor scooter. Yes, ma'am. Can you describe it for me, please? It is a 2018 Yamaha Zuma. Is that a small? No, it's, I got a picture of it here. Can I see that, please? Yeah, well, it's small. Yeah, it's a and small vehicle. you were on this vehicle with a child? Yes, ma'am. That was your son, who's how old? Uh, 12. What's his name? Justin Barr. He's not here today? No. Why not? He has autism. And you were riding with him going where on October 20th of last year? I just picked him up from school and I was on my way home. How far is it? Uh, the school is less than a half a mile from my home. Do you pick him up every day? Most of the time, yeah, but I, since this accident, I have not picked him up since. Mom does. So there's a car available to yes. pick him up. It's your claim that the defendant, while acting negligently, hit your scooter and damaged it. Yes, ma'am. You want him to be responsible. That happened on the 22nd of October. I assume sometime after 3 o'clock? Yes. It was at 318. In what state do you live? Evansville, Indiana. Is there any sort of helmet rule in Indiana? No, ma'am. Yes, there is. My son, for a child, yes. Just he a was... second. So the answer is either yes or no. You yes, said no. For so there... me, no. For my son, yes. Was your son wearing a helmet? Yes, ma'am. You know he was. Shh, shh. No, listen to me. Shh. Don't speak. He had a small uh, purple bicycle helmet on. Now, you wear a helmet because? To keep him from getting his head hurt. Hurt? Yeah. Right. Well, Which just I... for my own interest, why wouldn't you wear a helmet to prevent you from getting hurt? Dumb is what dumb does. Well, that would be an answer, because that sounds sort of reckless to me. Yes, ma'am. I wear a helmet now. And I'm not so sure your son was wearing a helmet on the 22nd of October either. Sir, so I want you to be very, very careful when I ask you this question again. Are you positive that your son was wearing a helmet on the 22nd of October? No, ma'am, I wasn't 100% positive. Oh, okay. But he normally sure, just a... always is wearing a helmet. Okay. On your way home, I understand you have some sort of a chart to try to explain to me what the accident was. This is your version of the accident. So you want yes. to step over there, Mr. Klinghoffer? Yes, ma'am. That would be you and your son riding both of you, probably without helmets. And it looks, that's your version, and it looks I as was if. Sitting in traffic. Just a second. Sorry. And it looks as if there's a lot of traffic. Yes, ma'am. So a lot of traffic, no helmets. You're on your way home, and go ahead. I was just sitting in traffic here, waiting for the train to clear. And he comes out of his driveway and backs right into me. Okay. No horn, uh, just no a, regard just, 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 of me being wait, there. Wait one nothing. second. On the other side, this is your chart. Yes, ma'am. On the other side of where the defendant's driveway is, which I assume is the blue car, that's his driveway, is that a street? Yes, ma'am. Do you know where I'm talking about? Yes, Point to where I'm talking about. This is a street yes. called... Yes, uh, that's a street. Yes. And that's a street that has cars. Yes, ma'am. Right. So... 
one would say you should not be in that intersection. Well, so I just a second. Uh, just a second. One would say, even in your chart, you should not be in that intersection. You should be either have enough room in front or wait until the traffic moves because you're stuck in the middle. So a car can't move out of... I was actually sitting about right here. Well, this is your chart. Yes, ma'am. So you indicate that that chart is not absolutely correct. No, it's and not. And that your scooter was right behind the I three cars. Behind these three cars here. But still in the intersection. Yes, ma'am. Just uh, a second. We was coming to a rolling stop as the arms were coming down, so I didn't know where I was going to stop at, so I was rolling with traffic. And the vehicle that was in front of me was also pulling a trailer, and I couldn't see around it. It was a big box trailer. So you couldn't see what was in front of you? No, I could not. And I, I got as far away from his driveway as I possibly could. No, you weren't even thinking about his driveway, sir. Let's be square. You know, it's not a good idea to make things up as you go. No. You didn't even know that his driveway was there. Yeah, I did. You I did? Just, I just knew it was second. there, but you... I was trying to get it far enough out of the way of the intersection. I didn't think he was going to come out of his driveway and back into me, ma'am. Well, so you were watching the other side, not the driveway? Yeah. Is I that was what you're saying? looking at the intersection. Okay. Yeah. Making sure I got out of the intersection, okay. got past the yellow line. Okay. So he clipped the... Rear, right by my tail light. Yeah, back here. Yes, ma'am. And what happened? You can go back now. And it literally just shoved me over. Okay, go back. So it shoved you over. Now, when it shoved you over, did you land on one foot or did you land on the pavement? Oh, we landed on the pavement. I tossed my son up because he was sitting in front of me. Just, sec up just a his second. Feet. Oh, hold on. Hold I went into dad the phone. Mode. Hold the phone. <laughs> Your son was sitting in front of you. Yes. That's is that what he said? He was sitting in front of me. So your son was driving. No, he was. I'm not trying driving. I to was get. Driving. I'm trying to get this picture in my head. I'm being a with this parent. little, just a second, with this little scooter. Your son was in front of you. This is one seat. So he was sitting in front of you. Yes, ma'am. Your 12-year-old. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And how tall is your 12-year-old? Probably about five foot, if that. My size. Yes. So, like a fully grown adult. He may be not yet fully grown for a kid, but I'm a fully grown adult and I'm five feet tall and I've been that my whole life. So I'm an adult. Yeah. Yes. Right? Okay. So your adult child is sitting in front of you. You're sitting behind him. Yes. Now I want you to explain to me, hold out your arms. I want you to explain to me how your son is in front of you, you're behind him in the back part of this seat and you're driving. I want you to explain that to me. The 12-year-old driving the motor scooter. He was not driving. But I don't believe you. I don't believe you either. I don't I'm care dead. whether you believe me. You're not judging me, I'm judging you. So that means that if I don't believe you, that's important. If you don't yep. believe me, that is irrelevant. Matthew Klinghoffer claims fellow motorist Robin Major hit Matthew's scooter while Robin was pulling out of his driveway. Go ahead. I'm reaching around my son and driving. I've been doing it since I was 16. I've been driving scooters since I was 16. Hey, you may have been driving scooters when you're 16, but I've been using my common sense for 80 years. And I don't see why your son wasn't sitting behind you so you didn't have to lean over on that big long seat in order to be maneuvering this scooter. I'm not visualizing that, Mr. Klinghoffer, so I want you to take a deep breath. Kevin, let me see Mr. Major's diagram. So I want you, your son is sitting in front on the mm -hmm. seat. You're sitting in the raised portion behind him. Mm -hmm. I want you to put that down there. <clears throat> Which sitting back there in the raised portion makes me sit I... up much higher than him. Sarah, mm -hmm. does your research indicate how long this thing is? Does it give any dimensions? I'm sure I could find it. Okay, so he clipped the back and you fell off? We fell over. I put, stood my son back up. I okay, got up. Okay, so you fell over and son got up? 
I got my son up, I got up, he was still pushing my vehicle, I got up to smack on the back of his window, and then he gets out and aggressively screaming at me, why are you smacking on my window, why are you trying to break my window? Okay. I asked him, why are you still proceeding to try to run over my vehicle? But he's not trying to run over your vehicle, sir. What kind of car did he have? He had a, a truck. Chevy Blazer, 2003. Big one. He's in a very high SUV, right? And you're in a very low scooter. Mm-hmm. Now, neither you or your son went to the hospital, is that right? No, ma'am. Neither, neither you or your son had medical treatment at the scene. Uh, my son was looked over, but that was Just it. a second. Neither you had medical treatment no, at the scene. No, Neither you or your son went to a doctor. No. Now, do you have a photograph of what your scooter looked like after this accident? Because this is That's his it. photograph. That's after the accident. There's another one. Okay. I'd like to see what your photograph looks like. There's all of Mr. Klinghoffer of I'm the motorcycle, because Mr. Major is handing me up his photographs of what this looks like. Here's the whole stack. Okay. So what we're talking about is this piece right here. That's my exhaust and... Just a second. That's what's damaged. That this piece... the upper panel there. I don't see anything damaged in the upper on my panel. On picture, it shows it. I'd like yeah, to see it. I bet it, it does. Yeah. Now, on that shh, muffler, shh, shh. it's rust. Shh. That's not rust. Shh. I might not know nothing about scooters, but I know what rust is. Mr. Mr. Major. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what's wrong with you. I made myself clear pleasantly to you, respectfully to you, but you certainly understood that here we don't talk to each other. Yes, ma'am. That you will have a turn right now. It's his turn. Yes, ma'am. And, Your Honor, that wheelbase is 50 inches, so about four feet wheel to wheel. Okay. So let me see. So from here to here, wheel to wheel is four feet. So sitting on the back here, in order to get to the handlebars... Maybe like three feet. Three feet. Hold out your arms. Nah. Okay. Now, just to complete your story, sir, Mr. Klinghoffer, this happened in October, and you said you wear a motorcycle helmet now, yes, or a helmet yes. now, since the accident. Yes, ma'am. Since this accident. It scared me straight. And did you or did you not have the scooter repaired? No, I have not had just it repaired. A so the answer is no. Pay attention, I... Mr. Klinghoffer, from which I deduce, you're looking at your papers, from which I deduce that the motor scooter is operable. You've been using it since October, no. despite the... Oh, yes, that's what you just said. You... I haven't uh, been using it. Who's been using it? I've I got three others. No, no, no. I got three other scooters that I've been driving. I, I don't have believe... not been driving I, Just that a one. second. I don't believe you, sir. Okay. I want you to be really careful about what you say to me. You do wear a helmet now. Now you know where I'm going, Mr. Yes. Klinghoffer. Since the accident, so does your son. There is nothing that appears to be mechanically wrong with this motor scooter in either your photographs or his. Nothing I mechanical. Estimate. I don't care what your estimate says, sir. I'm my naked eye. First of all, you understand that I'm doubting... Yeah, I understand, I'm doubting big parts of your story, Mr. Klinghoffer. I understand, ma'am. I doubt big parts of your story about whether or not... You were wearing a helmet. I don't think your son was wearing a helmet. I think that this diagram indicates to me that you were in a place where you shouldn't have been. That's your diagram. He has his own diagram that'd probably be very different. So I am going to assume, because that's my common sense, that you and or your son have been riding this motor scooter since October and that it hasn't sat idly. I don't care what you got because the pictures belie the fact that this motor scooter was damaged beyond being rideable. And that's if it was his fault. Okay, now we've got his picture, now we're coming to you. Is that a fair and accurate representation... Yes. ...of the accident no, site? No, it's not. Yes. Now... How would you know? You weren't even there. You didn't show up 20 minutes after the fact. Uh, excuse me. You did not show up. She wasn't even there. She I'm going to th throw you out, and you're going to lose this... I'm going to throw you out, and you're going to lose... When you called him an idiot! In front of my son! Okay, she's gone. Gone, gone, gone. Yeah. I know why you can't afford insurance. Gone. We wouldn't be here today did, if he had insurance. Did you understand why I threw your wife out? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you people think this is all about. The fact that he had no 
is what you say to me, he had no insurance, which is why you're here. Yeah, we wouldn't be just, here right now if we did, if he had insurance, and insurance would have took care of all Yeah, that. well, you, it's possible, Mr. Klinghoffer, that you wouldn't be here right now. And I haven't made a decision yet if you weren't driving recklessly, oh, yeah. without helmets, with your son, recklessly. with your son, who, according to you, has issues, the 12-year-old driving the motor scooter. He was not driving. But I don't believe you. I don't believe you either. I don't I'm care done. whether you believe me. That you're not judging me. I'm judging you. So that means that if I don't believe you, that's important. If you don't yep. believe me, that is irrelevant. Were you driving your car uninsured? I was moving my... Oh, no, 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 no. Be very careful what you say to me. You turned the ignition on, started to move. That's driving. Matthew Klinghoffer is accusing fellow motorist Robin Major of hitting him and his son while Robin backed out of his driveway. Okay, your statement, Mr. Major, based upon this diagram is that the defendant pulled out and was to sort of beat the traffic and was driving not in a lane, which suggests to me, sir, that you saw him. I didn't see him. Well, when how do you I know was, that he pulled out? When I was coming, backing out, the car that's adjacent there waved me out. You mean the car... Behind. Go over there. I know what you're talking about, just so that we're clear. The car behind this said you... This car, as I'm coming out of my driveway, or he's, he's saying, he's waving me out. He's waving you on he's to suggest clear. that it's clear. So I'm coming out, and, and I didn't see him, Your Honor. You didn't see him? No. Okay. Now go back. Now, Mr. Major, we're going to get to insurance. Were you driving your car uninsured? I wasn't dri I was moving my... Oh, no, 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 no. Be very careful what you say to me. You put a key in the ignition. You turned the ignition on. You put the car in reverse. Yes, ma'am. Started to move. That's driving. Yes, ma'am. And driving far enough into the street so you weren't on your property. No, my according... car was still in... Oh, no, 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 the Mr. Major. Mr. Major, you said that that's a fair and accurate yeah, representation right. of the accident that's scene. That's my driveway. The back of your car is not in the driveway. The back of your car is in a public street. That's right. what you... Right, I would know. Yeah, he was... Listen to me, Mr. Major. I'm an equal opportunity abuser. <laughs> you have to understand that. So, please, you know... I'm sort of ancient, but please don't treat me as if I'm stupid. No, we, you know, people confuse mind? age with stupidity. No, that would be a that. huge mistake on your part. Yes. Huge. Unless you're suggesting he came up on your driveway, which this doesn't suggest at all, you were in a public street without insurance. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, that would be an easy. Did the police respond to this accident? Yes, ma'am. Is there a police report? There, yes, ma'am. May I have it, please? they gave me. Right here. Okay. Scuff and scratch marks were observed on the left side of vehicle two. That's what the police officer observed. Now, what did you do after this accident, Mr. Klinghoffer? I called the police. You know, got the police. The police came. They took a report. They spoke to you. Now, you were picking your son up from school. Yes, ma'am. Where did you go? I went home. You went home with your son. Now, when you went home with your son, you were riding in front. Is that correct? We walked home. My vehicle was not rideable. My exhaust pipe was... Just a sec. How did you get the motor scooter? I pushed it. Did you see him push the motor scooter? I seen him push it down so far, and then he got on it. Just a second. Would you bring in Mr. Klinghoffer's wife? This way. Step over next to your husband, please. Were you at home when your husband came home with your son after this accident? He actually called me. Just a second. I said, were you at home? Yes, I was at home. Who else was home with you? My brother and my friend. You say your husband called you and he told you about the accident? Yes. And what did you do? Me and got in the car and we pulled up and I, I parked in the middle of the street. Go over to that chart and show me where you pulled up. No, right here. Okay, so you pulled up right near where the accident was? Yes. And where was your husband? He was right here with Justin. Okay, go back. 
And then what happened? Police come, police leave. I want you to tell me what happened next. After the police and fire department ambulance leave, me and Justin walked to where they told me to park my car. So me and Justin got in the car. And your husband? He has already was walking the scooter back to our house with... And is that how he arrived at the house, walking with the motor scooter? Yes. Very good. Kevin, she can go out now. This way, please. <laughs> now, as soon as Kevin gets back, I'm going to take a look at your estimate. Thank you, Kevin. <sighs> OK, so protector muffler, reasonable. Front fender, unreasonable. I... Just a second. You understand? Yeah. OK. Radiator cover, footrest boards. No. Rear reflector is reasonable. Exhaust pipe. OK. Now, Mr. Major. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to tell you that ordinarily I would award him half the damage because I think that he was 50% responsible for this accident. I think he was driving negligently with his son. I think his son was actually, his 12-year-old son was driving the scooter. I think that that's what happened because his story about him sitting in the rear seat hunching over his son in a four-foot wheelbase is not something that I can conjure. And if it was true, it was still reckless. So I would actually ascribe half of his damage to him. I'm not, and I'm going to tell you why. Because if there was a lot of traffic, you are at least partially responsible for not being more cautious. You're driving in a big car, there was somebody behind you because you did, in fact, hit them. And you have to be very cautious when you're driving a big car. The reason I'm ascribing all the damage to you, sir, is because you had no insurance. And nobody belongs on the road without insurance. And there has to be a penalty when you're driving without insurance, just like when you were driving without a license. Do you require a license? Just a second. Fire. Hey! Where you live, which Sarah can check, do you need a driver's license to ride a scooter on the street? No, you need an endorsement for a Class B scooter. A what? An endorsement for a Class B scooter. OK. Do you have that? Yes, ma'am. Does your son? No. Your son was driving. Your case is dismissed. We're finished here. Thank you very much. My son was not driving. This court is adjourned. I had insurance, but I had it on my other vehicle, not on my truck. I didn't feel nothing until he was pounding on the back of my window. I did not see the scooter until after the fact. I wear your helmet when you're on a scooter and have insurance when you're back on your driveway. You know what was interesting about that, Sarah, to me? The one thing he said, which came out sort of by accident, <laughs> was that his son was in front of him. And there's no question that... I can imagine a world in which you're very uncomfortably trying to ride around your son, but he's not an, a seven or eight-year-old. You know, he's a teenage boy who's five feet tall, and that would be like one of us sitting in front of him. So I yeah, agree I... that it doesn't make the most sense. I could fathom it. However, common sense kind of kills it. Common sense kind of kills it, and so does we were all wearing helmets. <laughs> yeah. And so does I pick him up in the motor scooter, and this guy for sure lets his 12-year-old son drive it. And there's a lot of traffic yeah. based upon what both things. And the defendant had no insurance. Kimberly Gutierrez is suing her mother, Rhonda George, for false allegations, debit card charges, and personal belongings. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2131, Gutierrez versus George. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Gutierrez, this is your mother. Yes, ma'am. And who is this? My grandmother. And that's your daughter? Yes. I'm reading the complaint and the answer, and this is what your complaint is about. You claim that your mother had you falsely arrested, as a result of which you spent four months in jail. While you were in jail, it is your claim that your mother used a debit card of yours, I think $3,000 worth, and you had some belongings at her house that you want. I gather that you've had some problems in your own life. You have at least three children. Yes. Was the state ever involved in placing the children in foster care? No. And what about your daughter? My daughter, yes. And how old is your daughter? She's 19 months. At what point did the state become involved with your daughter? In May of this year, May 18th of this year, when there was false allegations made against... Well, when my mom refused to give me my daughter back. In May, 
when you brought your daughter to your mother's house when? I called my brother on May 17th of 2022, and I asked him to babysit my daughter. Your brother. And does your brother live with your mother? Yes, he was staying with her at that time. So on the 17th, you asked your brother, who was staying with your mother, if he would babysit for your daughter. Where were you going? I was needing to go to Fresno, and I had just received my income tax check. So I needed to go to Fresno, and I was on foot because my car was impounded the day prior. Were you going alone? To Fresno, yes. So you brought your daughter on the 17th of May to your mother's house, and your brother was supposed to watch him, according to you, while you went to Fresno. Watch, yeah, he met me down the street, actually, because there's a restraining order, so I didn't actually go to the resident. Who has a restraining order? My mother has a restraining order on me. Is the restraining order that she has against you a final order or a temporary order? It's good for three years, that's all I know. That's a final order. Was that a final order of protection after a trial, or did you consent to it? I was not notified of the court date. I, no, I was, didn't consent to anything. Okay, so it was a default. I don't know what that means. It means you didn't show up, and they entered a final order of protection in favor of your mother, so you're not permitted to go to her home. Right. Since that's not really the subject of this, I don't have to get into it. In any event, you went on the 17th, you dropped your child off at your mother's house, your brother was there, and then what happened? I finally got to Fresno, I got a ride, I got to the check cashing place, it literally took me... Don't tell me, I'm not interested in that. 17th, you dropped the child off. You were supposed to pick the child up when? That evening. On the 17th? Yes. And did you? I showed up about, it was a little before 10. I showed up, I called my brother, I said, I'm down the street. He was like, yeah, I'll be right there. 10 o'clock at night? It was almost, ma'am, I was on foot. And... I was just a second. I asked you, 10 o'clock at night? It was right before 10, yes. Okay. When I got there, I called him. It had been about 15 minutes had gone by, and I called him back, and I said, where are you at? And he said, mom won't let me leave with the baby. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, Mom won't let me leave with the baby. My mother instinct kicked in, and I went in, like, fight or flight. And I walked down to my mom's house, and I knocked on the door and was asking for my daughter. I finally came to my... Oh. Okay. So when your brother said that to you, instead of going to the police, you violated the order of protection. I ended Under... up leaving and calling the sheriff. Okay. But you didn't. You went... Of so course, you, yes. you went I to... was going for my daughter. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what happened at 10 o'clock at night or 10.30? Uh, yes. I finally realized that about five minutes of being at the house, I was like, okay, you need to leave. So I left because she wouldn't open the door to give me my daughter. I left. I called the sheriff. And so I told them the situation. So they had walked down to my mother's and let her know that what she was doing was basically... No, they... don't know what she was doing. The police came with you. And told her with that they you. could arrest her. Good and told okay. her that if she did not, that she needed to give my daughter back. But because it was late, the baby was already asleep, and so the, the cops that came down, back down to me, and they said, look, we don't, because they knew me. Whatever. I'm allowing you to give me a certain amount of hearsay so that I can make this story make sense. Oh, okay. Do you understand? But don't tell me, because they knew you, what they thought, Yes, ma'am. You were told to come back in the morning. Yeah, the agreement was, was that, uh, between my mom and the sheriff, was that I could pick up Malia in the morning. The sheriff told me to call before 6 o'clock in the morning, before he got off his shift, and that he would come back out and do another standby. The next morning came, between me and my grandma, I had us call my mom. And no, no, just a second. What does that mean between you and your grandma? Your agreement was you were supposed to call the sheriff, the sheriff, I, according I, to you, I, before I called 6. my grandma. No, not the grandma. The agreement was you weren't supposed to call your grandma. You were supposed to call right, the sheriff. Right, but I needed a ride. I needed a ride. So I called my grandma to have her come pick me up. Just a sec. Where were you? I was staying at a friend's house. I no, didn't well, live just in a Selma. Sec. Just a sec. You were staying at what friend's house? The sheriff came, got behind us, and tried to, like, pin us in, and my grandma went to take off. So your grandmother was driving. Yes, ma'am. And she was trying to evade the police to go someplace else. Kimberly Gutierrez claims her mother, Rhonda George, owes for debit card charges and personal belongings. You were staying at what friend's house? My friend Isaiah's. Isaiah? Yes. I stayed the night there waiting for my daughter. The Just a morning. second. Isaiah. Isaiah what? Bonilla. And what is your relationship He's with him? He's my best friend. He's been my best friend since high school. Where are you living now? I live with my grandmother right now since I was uh, released. Full time? Right now, yes. What do you mean right now, yes? I'm in the process of getting my own place. Okay, so 
You called your grandmother and then... Called the sheriff. And then... Waited for the sheriff to respond. And then? The sheriff did not respond for a few hours. Okay, so you were waiting for the sheriff to respond. The sheriff did not respond until when? It was after 7 o'clock in the morning, and it wasn't seven, even the sh Yes, ma'am, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Your daughter is, according to you, 19 months old? 19 months old. And she had prior to that been living with you? Yeah, she was living with me all the time, yes. She was living with you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now let's get back to this arrest that you had. According to your papers, your daughter was with you up until that time. What time did she wake up in the morning? Uh, usually she wakes up between 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Well, then could you tell me why, if she wakes up between 7.30 and 8, why you would even contemplate picking her up before 8 o'clock in the morning? Because one of my issues was with certain officers that would have been responding, and the officer that responded the night of the incident, he told me, if you wanted me to be the officer to respond, you need to call me before I get off my shift. Fine, but he didn't respond to you. But according to no. you, he didn't respond to you. No, it was so a different officer. So that my question to you they is... They did respond if you're... at 7 o'clock in the morning. And did what? It was a horrible mess. Well, he did what? They responded. When they responded, he showed up. The officer told me that he did not want to be there. He said, if I have my way, you'll never see your daughter again. And I looked at him, and I said, wow, okay. What do you mean you looked at him? Where were you like, when you looked at him? I was right next to him, but I just... Where, at the precinct or at your no, house? At, no, down the street from my mom's. Okay, so he responded to you when you were down the street at your mother's house, and he said, I'm not getting involved in this, and if I had my way, you would never have your daughter. And so what did you do? So, at that point, my grandma pulled up, and I told him, I said, your assistance is no longer needed, and that uh, uh, my grandma could just get my daughter. And he says, well, you already called me. The deputy did. So I said, okay, whatever. He asked me if I had somewhere to live, and I said yes, and whatever. And so he went down to my mom's. When he went down to my mom's, he was supposed to just go down there and get my daughter. When he was taking too long, I could walk so, so far this way, and I could see straight down my mom's street. So I did. When I did, I seen that my mom was out there just giving him an earful. I know this woman very well, okay? So I just imagined what was being said about me. Well, I guess the back door is screwed and nailed shut at the house. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's okay. not important. Yeah. So anyways, my best friend went over the back fence. What do you mean your best friend? Isaiah Bonilla. Oh, so you brought Isaiah with you? He went... Just a second. So you have your grandmother, and then you've got Isaiah, your best friend, also to go to your mother's house. Yes, ma'am. He got and my daughter. Isaiah brought her to where you were. Yes. And then what happened? I started walking back towards Isaiah's house. When I started walking back towards Isaiah's house, my grandma pulled up in her car, and she was like, are you ready to go get your car out of the impound lot? And I said, yeah, I'm ready. And so I got in her back seat with my daughter. When I got in the back seat, I got in the middle. Well, then she was like, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Your mom's over there saying a whole bunch of stuff to the deputies, so I don't know what's going to happen. And so I was like, well, I got to go get my stuff from Isaiah's. So I go to jump back out the car. As I go to jump back out the car... But it just second. Now you have your daughter. Because I needed my wallet. My bag was at Isaiah's. My purse and everything was at Isaiah's. I went to go, I was going to go back and pick it up. Well, right when we were going to go back, the sheriff came, got behind us, and tried to, like, pin us in, and my grandma went to take off. So your grandmother was driving. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And she was trying to evade the police to go someplace else. Yes, ma'am. And how many police cars were involved? One. Were there ever any more than one police car? Once we got to the police department, of course, there's a police department. No, I'm talking about the number of police cars. So there's a police car oh, like now... coming behind us? No. It was just one. It was just one? Yes, ma'am. And you were accelerating no. to get there? Was the police car siren on? To no. To... Well, how did you know that he was trying to pull you over? Because he tried to hit her car. Oh, that would give you a clue. So you're telling me he tried to hit your grandmother's car without notifying you in any way to pull over? Yes, ma'am. That's why I spent four months in jail and I beat my case. I went to trial and beat my case. Everything was dismissed. I'm not responsible for the criminal justice system. I'm only responsible for what goes on here. Yes, ma'am. So I assume once you got to the police station, both you and your grandmother were arrested? Yes, ma'am. And that was in May? Yes, ma'am. And now we're... Uncross your arms. And now we're in December. Yes, ma'am. Of the same year. Yes, ma'am. And you're out of jail. Yes, ma'am. You've been out of jail for about since August 25th. Who does your daughter live with? Right now, she um, she's with the mentor. She's my ex-husband's aunt. 
ma'am. And who placed her with your ex-husband's aunt? I did. Not the court? No, I requested her. Does the child's great aunt have guardianship? No, custody? I'm, I'm getting my daughter back, ma'am. But for the last three months, she's been with this aunt. Right, because Child Protective Services did get involved, and Child Protective Services, I've been doing everything that... Well, that's what I asked you. I asked you whether Child Protective Services... Child Protective were involved. Services did get involved with my daughter, yes. Did. That's what I assumed. And I've been drug testing, I've been Just doing... Just a second. Yes, ma'am. That's what I assumed, that Child Protective Services was involved. And so if Child Protective Services are involved, then they are overseeing the child's placement with the aunt. You have an ongoing case. Yes, ma'am. Probate court. No, not probate. Which one? Family court? Family court, yes. When was the case opened with regard to your daughter in the family May court? May 18th, the day I got arrested, ma'am. And that child became involved with the foster care system in May. Okay, so your grandmother also spent a little time in jail. How much? Two weeks. I, quite frankly, don't understand your case. While I was in jail, Your Honor, while I was incarcerated, my mom had all my, my debit cards, my ID. She had went and actually, because of me getting arrested, she had went to Isaiah's and picked up all of my stuff. You mean so... just a sec? Just a sec. Let me understand this. It is your claim that the reason that you had to go to Isaiah's house was to get your pocketbook, your wallet, your credit card that you, left just to, that you left there. But I never made it there. I understand that. And Isaiah... Clearly, from what you tell me, knew of the problem because he was part of this little Ordeal. conspiracy to get your daughter out of the house and was at the back of the house to pick up your daughter who was being put over the fence. So why would Isaiah give your mother... Because she went over there with a baseball bat and busted out his windows. On February 4th this year, I had... I lost my twin, okay? And that was the first time I had contacted my mother because I was going through it and I messaged her and I told her, I said, I really need my mom right now. If anything, I need my mom right now. Kimberly Gutierrez is accusing her mother, Rhonda George, of wrongfully using her debit card and keeping her belongings. So why would Isaiah give your mother... Because she went over there with a baseball bat and busted out his windows. And the reason why all of my things were at my mother's was because I hadn't lived at my mom's for over a year. What your case is about... Is my belongings... Your, is you claim that your mother went over and got your wallet from Isaiah's because I asked you what you were doing here. I certainly am not looking into the allegations of false arrest. It sounds as if you did the absolute wrong thing in trying to regain your daughter, whose custody, actually, you lost at a dispositional hearing and was determined to be a dependent child and placed in foster care. That's what happened here. Right. OK, so I'm not even addressing your claims of false arrest. Okay, what so you did was actually the, the wrong thing. I said, so what are you suing for? Now, my, you said your... My you're... belongings, okay. my, my what, money. Just a second. What money? She used my... CalFresh, which is my EBT food stamps, and my CalWorks, which is my cash aid through the welfare department. Just a second. So you're suing her for taking your food stamps and your welfare check. Right. Just a second. Your food stamps and your welfare check. And this is the statement from my tax return of all the money that was on there. On where? On my debit card. It had over $3,000 on it, and I marked what was used when after she had picked it up. And then these are receipts from some of my belongings that was at her house. Just a second. You haven't lived in your mother's house for... I moved Shh. back to my mother's in the Just beginning. a second. Yes, ma'am. You hadn't lived in your mother's house, according to what you said to me. Whitney, was it a year ago? Didn't you say that you moved out of my your mother? My mom allowed me to come back. Because there was an order of protection. She had called me. I was living in Fresno, ma'am. Just a second. You hadn't lived in your mother's house. You said you were living with your grandmother. For how long were you living with your grandmother before May? I thought I was living with my grandmother right now. I was living in Fresno, ma'am. I want to know what property you think... My clothing, my husband's clothing, my, my daughter's bassinet. I had jewelry there. I had uh, all of my clothing. Why would all of your clothing be there? You were living with your grandmother. I hadn't moved into my grandmother's until I got out of jail. I was living in Fresno, Fresno. and my mom... Shh, just a sec. You're not Is letting that me what... talk. I, I just... I'm not understanding your movements. Okay, my mom kicked me out 
in 2021, okay? My daughter was just a few weeks old. My mom kicked me out due to her boyfriend. She kicked you out? Yes. And? When she kicked me out, I went through Marjorie Mason, and Marjorie Mason had placed me in hotels. I was placed in hotels for about three or four months, okay? And then it was about January of 21. I was at this time, I was pregnant with twins. They had genetic defects. On February 4th this year, I had... I lost my twins, okay? And that was the first time I had contacted my mother because I was going through it and I messaged her and I told her, I said, I really need my mom right now. If anything, I need my mom right now. My daughter, had, she had never, had not seen my daughter. She was not a part of my daughter's life. I did not speak to my mother, nothing. So she made an agreement that she would watch my daughter because I had to go to San Francisco because I was too far along in my pregnancy and it was just a big old mess. Do you have any of your daughter's property? No. Okay, now, let's talk about this card. Did you pick up her property from Isaiah? When? That's either a yes or a no, after the 18th of May. Well, how do I answer that when I did pick up her property, but her cards were not in there? Her driver's license wasn't in there. Her food stamp card wasn't what were you in there. Doing, what were you doing at Isaiah's? So she asked... Was this when she was in jail? Yes, right after she got arrested. So I went down there. No problem, he handed it right to me. Look in my wallet, make sure everything's in there. Like I said, her I don't know if it was her driver's license or ID was missing, her food stamp card, and the other card, the bank card. I don't know how to get proof, but her best friend, he cash dabbed everybody money. There was a bunch of I, people, I even himself. Information right here. Even himself and his girlfriend. Did and you, I don't want to get into the I, whole I don't want to get into it either. It's far too complicated for me. Is what you're telling me that you never used a card that she had? No, I did not. Because I'm not concerned about food stamps or no, welfare. No, I did not. Suing the wrong person. You were in jail, so you didn't need money from welfare. What proof do you have that I have your my my bank statements. What proof do you have that your mother withdrew money? What... She was the one that went and picked up my cards. Oh, I don't know that. That's not what she says, and you have no proof. Isaiah's not here, correct? No. I don't doubt you when you say that somebody used your card. I just need proof my to mother, show... My mother, I know that she was supposed to get my daughter from CPS. She was supposed to go get a crib with my card, and I have the... <laughs> where she, And my grandma can... can... I just want you to show yes, me... Yes, ma'am. No, 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 that oh. your mother... I believe that people used your card. I she need... used my card. No, I don't know that. I need you to show me proof that your mother How used am I supposed the... to show? I have the, I... my bank statements. Well, then I'll take a look at your bank statement. If your bank statement told me who used your card, then that's an easy. She said she did not. I just want you to show me proof that any of these were used. I mean, we have a lot of PlayStations, DoorDash, Amazon yeah. Marketplace. And all I've of those... that throughout the whole time. Shh. I understand that. I suggest that you concentrate on getting yourself together. If you want to reunite your family, I suggest that you put your priorities in order. Oh, they are in order. Evidently not. I work, I have a job, I go to school, I'm getting my own place, but I'm going to court, I'm getting my kids back. Good. Can I give you this? I don't know what it is. Well, I just want you to look at it. You're telling me is this is part of your daughter's criminal history? What is this? No, I'm from? just showing you. She just got out of jail just a couple of days ago. They haven't picked up charges, Your Honor. You were arrested on November 28th? Yes. I'm not going to let you tell me about this. You have a lawyer? Yes. As I said, Ms. Gutierrez, if you're trying to work to get your family back together... Yes, ma'am. ...and your kids back together... Yes, ma'am. ...it would be a good idea to think about having more children until you get these children back under your roof. We're done here. Your case is dismissed. Have a good day. This court is adjourned. Oh, I love her decision. I don't want to have nothing to do with any of them. They've burned their bridges. Perfect example of suffer the little children. So you have three kids, none of whom live with you. They go back and forth between a grandmother who would participate in evading the police, but where the police had to stop them by ramming the car. Yeah, I was going to say, there was something in the papers right. about a crash and... Well, she said he tried to ram my mother's car. So, fingers crossed for her. Yeah, but, and the kids. But take care of...
suing his neighbor, Stacy Benedum, for breach of contract and attorney fees. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2128, Hall versus Benedum. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Hall, you and the defendant are neighbors. Yes, ma'am. And your houses are right next to each other. Hers is on the corner, and mine is right, right next to, to her. Yes. Got it. What your complaint is that I see where those two, the truck and the vehicle behind it. The trailer, yes, ma'am. The trailer. The property to the left of that is your house. Yes, ma'am. And the property to the right of that is the defendant's house. Yes, ma'am. And it is your claim that the defendant, in writing, agreed to sell you that little piece of property that looks like it's been carved out of her property. Yes, ma'am. Because you had a narrow driveway, you wanted to park these two vehicles. Yes, ma'am. Based upon that agreement, you went ahead and did some work on that piece of property. Yes, ma'am. You put down gravel, you planted flowers, all to make it look as if that piece of property was part of your house. Not so much to make it look like it's part of my house so I can get in it, because the agreement was that there was three pine trees there prior to her telling that, that I can buy the property. No, no, no. The three trees that are there had nothing to do with this except that they were taken down. And were they taken down and the removal of the trees was paid for by you or by her? By both of us. By both. Okay. So you asked to have the trees removed, and you both paid to have the trees removed. Okay. Not only did you cut the trees down, but you took that property and made it look like yours. You say that there was an agreement in writing for her to sell you that piece of property. So I'd like yes, to see that agreement. Yes, ma'am. There's no agreement in writing. Just don't say anything. The very top line. Just a second. This is not a contract, sir, to sell land. I have a lot more. Shh. Not a contract to sell land. I see what she says to you. I am agreeing to sell you the property you are currently parked on for $1,000 plus costs. Let's get this in motion ASAP. And then she doesn't hear from you, and that's the 18th of May. And then she writes you again a little bit later, and she says her offer will expire at the end of today's business day 519. And on 519, at 10 o'clock at night, you write to her, Hey, Stacy, I've started working on things this morning. I have already been to the city of Akron, and once they are done and I get a surveyor and so on, I will keep you updated if that's okay. Last, everything is time sensitive, and I'm working as fast as I can to get the approvals. Just now seeing your texts. Right. Okay. The so that's day. what you're relying on as a contract to purchase property. Well, the fact that she said that she would sell it to me, and I started all the motions like she said okay. to do. I started all the motions, got the survey done, got okay. the fees done, I got everything done. All right. That was 5 19 2021. Mm -hmm. So show me what you did based on this and what you spent based on your belief that she had agreed to sell you the property and you had an agreement for sale, which is like a contract to sale of property. Most people know that when you sell a piece of property, you get a survey, you put it in the contract, you have a contract when the property is going to be transferred. That property would have to be surveyed because clearly you're carving a piece of property out of her property. Mm -hmm. I want to see what you did and what you spent because if you spent money based on this, I may consider that as part of your lawsuit, because then it turned out she didn't want to sell you the property. By the way, I wouldn't sell them the property either. It makes your property look ridiculous. It does. <laughs> we never agreed to sell the Just property. A... Okay. Did you write, I am agreeing to sell you the property you are currently parked on for $1,000 plus costs? Yes, I never agreed to sell the property until I told him he was no longer allowed to park there. It was never discussed. What is Depending this? on the stipulation that my mortgage company requires, which is an appraisal, they had to approve the selling of the property. All I'm interested okay. in is this one line. Mm -hmm. The other ifs fall after that, it says, I'm agreeing to sell you the property you are currently parked on for $1,000 plus costs. Yes. Okay, so you did that. Yes. I want to see the things that you started to do right after May 19th. You said, I've already started working on things this morning. This is May 19th. I've already been to the city of Akron. Yes. This is a receipt showing the $800 from the surveyor. 
Okay, may I see that, please? There's that one. This is a receipt from the attorney where I had the deed paperwork done. I'm looking for a date on this, sir. I'm looking for Here, dates on another, these you can look things. Look at this one too. Okay, June fifteenth. What is this? That's actually when I paid to have the three deeds made up. That's the four hundred fifty dollars that I had to pay to the attorney for him to make the three deeds up. And everything Stacy had to do was sign them. And that was June fifteenth. That was not quite a month later. Right. I started the next day. Okay. And this is so far what you spent in reliance on her statement that I'll sell you the property for $1,000. This is a breakdown that I have, that I wrote down, that you can show her that, of everything, the timeline and... Now, I don't need a breakdown of the timeline, sir. I need the bills for this, not what you wrote. Okay, oh, I... I need the bills for six tons of gravel that was in July. Here's um, one of the receipts right here. Okay. Did he ever give you $1,000? He never paid me. I'm a common sense person and a property owner. It was overreaching to think that you could buy a piece of that land for $1,000. Overreaching. Julian Hall claims his neighbor, Stacy Benedum, owes for building costs and attorney fees. Stacy is countersuing claiming Julian was illegally parking on her property. Okay, so far all I have that you paid was $450 for the deeds, $800 for the survey, and gravel to be delivered. I got the gravel in there. I also have the concrete that I had laid, flowers and stuff that I put in. Did he pay part of having the tree stumps removed? We split the cost and the labor of removing the debris of the trees. No, ma'am, that's not true. Who wanted the trees removed? I never had a problem with the trees. That's I like the trees. Don't speak. He wanted the trees cut down so he could have more space. He was already parking underneath the trees with a smaller trailer, just not his truck. He wanted more space, so he came to me and said, hey, what if I split the cost of the cutting of the trees? I said, that's fine, I'll split the cost. That's fine with me. And then I agreed to let him continue to park there as long as there was no tire marks. That's what it was. And then he built this thing. Well, he formalized parking there. Mm -hmm. Okay. At what point did Ms. Benedum tell you that she was not going to sell you the property? This actually started on 4-3 four, four, of, of 18. I'm not interested. I'm interested in... The beginning of these texts, okay. where you clearly had discussions, trees were removed. I don't quite understand why she allowed you to remove the trees, and I don't understand the whole transaction. Because it wasn't my, it wasn't nice my choice. Just a second. It was your choice. You wanted to park there. That's what you wanted. But the trees was dying. Yeah, just a, I don't care if they were dying. I don't care if they were shriveled up. I don't care. You carved out a piece of property. Now, if you carved out a piece of property that belongs to her and you didn't have an appropriate agreement in writing, which it has to be, then I believe, based upon her statement that you acted on, you're entitled to whatever you spent to renovate that property. Do you understand? You're not entitled to the property. No, I understand. You're not entitled to the property. You're entitled to what you spent to renovate the property. So now I want you to tell me on what date did she tell you that she was not going to sell you the property? That was 720 of 21. After I'd got everything done and called her, and said, asked her, could she meet me at the bank? She said, no, I'm not selling to you for a thousand dollars. But it goes deeper there. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. It's, it goes deeper than that because when it came to the trees, I didn't approach her with the trees. She came to me, said, since the tree was done, I said, well, I'll go in half with you. At that point, I said, when can I use the property? She said, you can use it as long as you need it. So that's when I started investing all this money into the So property. what? I don't care. She said to you, you can use it as long as you want. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I said nothing permanent. She said, as long as I need it, that's why I invested the gravel. Okay. What and, I'm telling you, sir, is the purchase and sale of property has to be with a certain formality. If you dealt with an attorney, the attorney would tell you that it had to be in a formality, signed by her, signed by you, the contract that provided for sale, when it took place, what the survey was, whether her bank would agree to let her sell off a piece of the property because you have a mortgage, all of those things. That's why agreements to sell Real property, which is land, have to be in accordance with a certain set of rules. This doesn't make it. However, if you relied on her statement in order to improve the property to make it comfortable for you based upon her 
text message, I believe that you are entitled, based upon the text message, to what you spent to improve it. But you have to understand, she's not going to let you park there anymore. And I'm okay with Just that. a second. Are you still parking there? No, ma'am. Since when? I will say September of 2022. So you were parked there in July of 21, August of 21, September of 21, October of 21, November of 21, December of 21, January of 22, all the way up to September. You were parking there. This is because we had... I we don't had a, give me a because. No, That's not, either a yes or a no. I was parked there, but we Just, also had a civil case, too. Which he dismissed two days we before. We had a civil case. Okay. She called the police. Uh, he the called police, the police on me twice. Just, the question was, when did she tell you she wasn't going to sell you the property? September, when she agreed not to meet me at the bank. That's when she told me she wasn't going to sell it. September of 2022? Yes, ma'am. I never knew we were meeting at a bank. Just, just a second. So I can do in September now. of 2022, she advised you. No, she, I'm sorry. It was August of 2021. Well, show me in August of 2021 that you told him you weren't selling him the property. Here's okay. I'll take both, Kevin. Thank you. And this was after she agreed. Shh. Okay. I'm just looking for the date on there's, this. Yeah, there's not a date on there. I'm sorry, but that was after May 18th of 2021. That was maybe July or August of 2021 when I told him, since he didn't meet all the requirements, that I no longer want to sell What it. requirements? He never met the requirements of paying me the money or getting the land appraised. The only thing he didn't do that my mortgage required is the appraisal. Ma'am, that wasn't true because I did everything that the city of Akron told me to do, who, who deal with this on a regular... <laughs> Did you get an appraisal? I got the land survey. She didn't did tell me about about appraisal until get... after I got everything I'm... done. That's why you have a contract in writing for the sale of property, sir. I don't think you did anything intentionally wrong, but there was an appraisal that was necessary. Clearly, if she has a mortgage and a bank is giving her a certain amount of money on a parcel of property and she wants to sell off a piece of that property, the bank is going to want to know how much that the value of the property has diminished by her selling it to you. So you have to have an appraisal. Do you understand? I understand that. Okay. And, and you didn't have an appraisal. I'm not going to tell it to you again. And all I want to know is when she first told you that you didn't have a deal. So once she told you that you didn't have a deal, whatever else you invested in this property was on you. No, and I didn't invest anything else other than getting an attorney and paying everything I, had, I needed to pay him. Once she told you that she wasn't selling the property to you, what'd you need an attorney for? You're not the aggrieved party here. You got to park for free because she was a good soul. I would have had your trailer and your truck towed to an impound on day two. Julian Hall has accused his neighbor, Stacey Benedum, of breaking their agreement. Stacy claims there was never an agreement and is countersuing for parking fees. Once she told you that she wasn't selling the property to you, what'd you need an attorney for? Because I had already had an investment after she said she was going to sell it to me. Once the attorney got involved, he told me to dismiss the case. Then after that, like three days later, I moved off the property. Just a minute. So who brought a civil case? I did. When? Last year of 21. And what happened with that case? It was dismissed. What did you bring a case against her for? For breach of contract. It was dismissed <laughs> because there was no contract. Your Honor, can I say something? What? He made all these improvements in 2018 before we ever discussed selling the property. You mean he put the gravel in? Yeah. Well, how could he put the gravel in over trees? The trees were cut down in 2018. Is that right, sir? We, the we, just, just, we, hey. That was, that's correct. The trees yes, that were cut down in 2018, yes. well before this. Yes. So you did use it. You used it for how many years? You used it 18, 19, 20, and 21. You used it. You used it. You had value from it. You had value from somebody else's property. You used her property for you to park on. You yeah, can't... Yeah, I, I wouldn't have done none of this if she would have told me no. Every move that I made, I asked her first. I got it in a text message. I asked her, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I... She said, yeah, go ahead and do it. If she would have said no, I wouldn't have done none of it. 
I want to put a dime into the property. I'm not going back to 2018, sir. If you made these improvements in the property in 2018 or 2019, before there was any hint of a writing that she was going to sell you property. She had property. a verbal that I can park there as long as I wanted to. OK, your case is dismissed, Mr. Hall. You don't have a case. You did park there until she told you not to park there anymore. And you had the benefit of parking there for at least well, three I got, years. I got money you had to, that she told me You had I the benefit of parking your things there for at least three years. Are they gone now? His truck and trailer are, but the gravel's still there, and we have to clean up, you know, get rid of that stuff. It was a huge mistake, so you're going to have to take care of that yourself. Okay. And I would take care of that, because that looks I ridiculous. I will. That looks ridiculous. You have a counterclaim. Yes. For parking. Forget it. But listen, I told him he couldn't park there back in May of 2021. He continued to park there till... So you should have been more vigilant. My attorney didn't notify him till May of this year of 2022 that if he continues to park there, we'll charge him $75 a day. And he continued to park there until the case was dismissed in August of 2022. So I'm only suing him for May of 2022 to August of 22. And did he move it? He did. Okay. You still living there? Yes. Do you talk to him? No. Had you talked to him previously? Yeah. We had a good relationship. I'm a common sense person and a property owner. It was overreaching to think that you could buy a piece of that land for $1,000. Overreaching. And if she had it appraised and if it's something that you want and she had, I guarantee you that that little piece of property would be appraised at a far higher cost than $1,000. Guaranteed. And I guarantee you that her bank would say, you can't let him buy that piece of property for $1,000. How much of a mortgage are you carrying? 76000 Not going to let her sell off that piece of property. You had the benefit of that piece of property for several years. I have to tell you that I really think that it's much nicer to look at plain grass than it is to look at a trailer and a truck from her backyard. Your Honor, I wouldn't have done I, none I, of it I, I don't, you would have said do it. Do you know what your attorney said to you? I can't help you. You don't have a contract. And Mr. Hall, that's what I'm telling you. I can't help you. You don't have a contract. And from what I know now, this all started in 2018, before there was any discussion of buying the property that you can prove to me. Because the thing that you gave me was in 2021. I have to tell you, you never had a problem because she was a good neighbor. If she let you park on her property, so if you think you're the one who's been aggrieved here, the truth of the matter is I don't think that you're the one who was aggrieved here. She let you park on her property. I have to tell you, I wouldn't have let that happen. I had a neighbor who had an easement. And I said, all I want from you when I bought the house was I want you to say that you will never try to claim this property by adverse possession and that you understand that it's my property. And then you can use it because it was a place that looked like it was part of his driveway. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not signing that. I said, if you don't sign it, I'm going to put a fence right in the middle of your front lawn, which is where my <laughs> property line is. I don't hear from him. I said, you have 24 hours to sign the paper or I'm putting a fence right in the middle of your front lawn because that's my property and you have an easement. And he didn't sign it. He would have lived with the fence until today because it's still there. Now his children are living with the fence because he's gone. You're not the aggrieved party here. You got to park for free for four years. For free. Because she was a good soul. She's not a bad guy. She was no, a good she, soul. I would have no, had, had your trailer and your truck towed to an impound on day two. She let you park there for four years. I wouldn't have been there. Goodbye. We're done. Thank you. This court is adjourned. She knew what type of work I did, so she said as long as I needed it. It was just a tough lesson of being nice to the wrong person. It did look like it was part of, part of my yard, so I, I get that part. I hope we can be cordial and just move on with our life. It is what it is. This is a great example of the statute of frauds and why it exists. So all writings for the sale of land, real estate, have to be in writing and signed by both parties. I'm sure it was created for situations just like these. There's a lot of moving parts. There's mortgages, there's banks involved a lot of the times. There are easements, there are water rights. Exactly. There are all kinds of things. Legally, they're some of the most complex documents that get drawn up. So it can't be a text message for $1,000 to sell off a piece of land without all the boxes being ticked. Right. After May of 2021, when she wrote that piece... For his detrimental reliance for, on the for, statement. For his reliance on that statement to his own detriment mm -hmm. by putting in gravel and other stuff. Mm -hmm. 
But then it came thought, out. It was way It was before. put down in 18 before yeah. she ever said anything about selling Just took it. it upon himself. <laughs> yeah. That would be on him. Yeah. And I don't feel badly for him because he got to park on property that wasn't his for almost four years. Yeah. year old Isabel Irwin is suing her father, Neil Irwin, for personal belongings. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case number 27, Irwin versus Irwin. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Irwin, this is your dad? Oh, yes, he is. And you're 19? Yes, I am. According to what I read in your complaint, your parents divorced when you were 10. Yes. And your father was your primary custodian. You lived with him. Yes, I did. Did you graduate from high school? Oh, uh, yes, I did. When you were 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, did you live with your father? Uh, at the age of 15, I moved out because... Okay. So at age 15, you moved out? Yes. Because here you said, when I was 18, my father kicked me out of the house for no good reason. Yes. Guess what? Well, you've just told me that you left the house when you were 15. Yes, and I lived with my mother for two years, and... Okay, so from age 15 to 17, you lived with your mother? Yes. Is that because you were having difficulty with your father? Uh, yes. Okay, and then you went to live with your mother? Uh, yes. But that didn't last? No. So now, at 17, you go back to your father? Yes. And you stayed with him until you were 18? Yes, correct. So, so far, I have the fact that your family is a little dysfunctional, but that you had certain problems. Um, so I moved out when I was 18. Just and... a second. Would that be a fair statement, that you had some problems? No, it would not be. Okay. What high school did you graduate from? It's a school partnered with the National Guard for kids that are off track to get them back on track. Did you have to pay for that school? Uh, no, they are paid by the government. Did you look them up for me? Yeah, it's a residential program for youths aged 16 to 18 who've dropped out of school or who are seriously behind in credits and need to catch up quickly. Okay, so you were dropped out of school? Uh, no. Or My... seriously behind? Yes. Dropped out or behind in credits. Okay. And how old were you when you graduated from... I was 17 years old. And so at that point, you moved in with your father? Uh, yes. And why did you leave when you were 18? He had evicted me. Okay. And I'd like you to tell me your version of his evicting you when you were 18, because this case involves you're suing your father for things, items that he disposed of that were yours, and you want this court to award you $7,400 for the things that he disposed of that were yours. Yes. Okay. So tell me why you believe he evicted you when you were 18. I believe he evicted me when I was 18 because I was buying my first car and he got jealous of the car I had and he stated that when I moved back in for the second time. Um, he evicted me the second... No, no, no. Where on the first time that your father evicted you? Not the second time. The first time your father evicted you, I can ask him or you want me to stay with you? You can ask him. Fine. Tell me why you evicted her the first time, which you did. The main reasons would be that she agreed to pay rent, which she never did. She needed she working? To, uh, off and on. I'd say over the past two years, she's probably had, from my guesstimate, 15 to 20 jobs, all ranging from an hour a day, I think the longest being about three months. Can't maintain a job, would prefer to smoke pot all day in her room and hang out with her boyfriend, basically. Which at the time, for the first eviction, she did not know Corey. Okay. But she still does the same thing. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. That's what you indicate here. So that was the reason that you evicted her the first time. And that was maybe in June? Uh, I would have filed that June 9th of 2021. June. Okay. But she came back shortly thereafter, in October. The sheriffs removed her August 13th, 2021. Is that because you asked her to leave and she wouldn't? Uh, it's a three-step process. And I had a 24-hour notice posted to the door after 34 days. Well, you, I mean, she's your daughter. Yeah. So there must have been some discussion, Mr. Irwin, with her. You saying to her, listen, this is not working out. There wasn't a discussion, Your Honor. Was not. I served her the first notice. We talked about it. Oh, you talked about it? Prior to me filing. I told her I would do it. I don't think she believed me. She knew you wanted her to leave as a result of that discussion. Yes. And she didn't. She did not. She had lived with you off and on, with the exception of two years that she lived with her mother, and part of it in a residential program. It's a residential program, correct? Yes. When she lived with you, she was 10 years old. Can you tell me, Mr. Irwin, from the time she was 10 until the time she was 18 and she was ultimately evicted, what 
items in the house you purchased, bed, TVs, anything big. She never purchased anything. When she came back from her mother, what did she come back with? Uh, I believe just a few clothes and a bag. She had to kind of run back. And to the best of your knowledge, had your daughter maintained any sort of gainful employment the last three years? No. So other than the clothes she came back with when she was 17, there were no big ticket items? Uh, there were a few by the time I had to evict her the second time, but I would have furnished those being, you know, bed set. Furniture, Tempur-Pedic bed. I think that's part of what she's really wanting out of this 7,400. Okay, so you purchased a bed? Yes. Because you didn't have one in the room where she was? I was just trying to take it, yeah. I uh, was using the room for my own purposes. I live alone until she moved back in, and um, usually welcoming of my daughter coming home. So I furnished a room. Okay, so that's why you left the first time. The first time you left because he got annoyed that you were hanging around doing nothing and smoking pot. I did pay rent, right. too. Right. Not and you doing, weren't doing it much. No, I was not smoking often. We're not doing much, is what I said. Yes, I had a job. I worked at the beginning of the year. For how many days? I worked there for about three months, and then I worked as a kennel technician for about two months. What happened to both those jobs? My dad, he would, he, his alcoholism, he would never let me sleep in the room as I was paying rent, and he would That's lock me true. out. He would lock me I, out. He, just, I, okay. He would lock me out, and he would flip the garage switch so I wasn't able to get access to the house. I wasn't able to get clean, so I couldn't obtain the job, and my mental health wasn't there for that job, so that's why I took the kennel technician okay. job, and that's when he evicted me. Where are you living now? Uh, with my boyfriend. That's him? Yes. And where are you working now? I am unemployed. Sorry, that's easy. So now you're not working. Now nobody's locked you out. Nobody's made it impossible for you to work. And what kind of work does your boyfriend do? He is construction. I do DoorDash. Okay. Your boyfriend is construction? Yes. How old is he? He is 20 years old. You're Corey. Yes, Your Honor. Who do you live with? Uh, my mom and her new husband. How did I know that? <laughs> How did I just know that? It's so perfect to be old that, I mean, I ask the questions. I could have asked the questions and answered the questions. So you and your girlfriend live with your mother? Yes, Your Honor. Did you graduate from high school? Yes, Your Honor. And what's the name of the company that you work for? Uh, Landscape. Do you work for them full time? Yes, I do. For how long? I've been working for them about two months now. Two months? Yes. Prior to that, what did you do? Um, I worked for Chewy. Chewy, the dog products? Yes, Your Honor. What happened to that job? Um, I just wasn't liking the job anymore, and I thought I could do a lot harder work, and that's what I strive to do is just continue trying to be the best person I can. And what does your girlfriend do all day when you're out in your landscaping job for the last two months? Um, she stays busy uh, going to the gym and making sure that everything is in tip-top shape and just bringing me lunch when I'm on my break for work. And you're living in your mom's house. Be a fair statement. You don't have to be a math wizard, which I am not, because you don't have enough money to move out into your own place. Yes, Your Honor. Does your mom work? Uh, yes, she does. Who else lives in the house? Uh, her newly husband. Now, you have a room in your mom's house? Yes, Your Honor. Is it furnished? Yes, Your Honor. Who bought the furniture? I bought the bed set and... Tell me when you bought the bed set. I bought it about two years ago because we moved there recently. So what you're telling me is you purchased a new mattress? Yes. With your earnings? Yes, Your Honor. And how much was it? It was about 1500 and if you left the house, you would want to take your mattress because you bought it. Yes, Your Honor. You wouldn't take any of the other furniture in the house because you didn't buy it. Yes, correct. Whether it's your dresser or a TV in your room, your parents bought that. Yes. The mattress you bought. Yes, Your Honor. Now you can sit. Show me that you gave him $3,000. I can't figure that you had saved $3,000. I gave him that to purchase the mattress because that was the time I was purchasing my car. How can you purchase a car? You don't work.
19-year-old Isabel Irwin claims her father, Neil Irwin, owes for personal belongings. Now, I'm gonna sort of pull this together. Eventually, you move back into the house after an initial eviction and you weren't doing well, I assume. Yes. And then you came back a couple of months later and asked your father if you could move back in. Yes. And he said, okay. Yes. And that didn't work out. He was unhappy with the arrangement. I was paying rent before. He just, he was kicking no. me out, so I decided not to pay rent. Whatever the reason, he wasn't happy with it. You were gone for a couple of months. He evicted me, just, yes. Yes. Well, he evicted you for a reason, Miss Arwen. You have to stop being a baby. He evicted you for a reason. He took you back because you went there. You said, I have no place to go. I assume, without going into specifics, because you look a little frightened, and I don't have to get that crazed with you because it sounds like a very sad situation, he said, it's not working out again. I want you to leave. And when you left, you did not, according to you, take your stuff. And your father, at some point after he received a text message from you, which I assume you have, sir? I do. Which said, have a nice life. After he received that, waited a while and that disposed... That was a statement I made because I asked him to help me fill up my tires because they needed air. And I saw him pull into the Safeway parking lot and leave with his groceries. And he never helped me. Okay. So you said, have a nice life. And then you want a whole bunch of things from the house. Now, I want you to tell me, with your limited work history, which you have, hardly enough to sustain yourself, because in October you came back to him and said, I need a place to live. So I want you to tell me what you purchased. I purchased the Tempur-Pedic bed. And who did you purchase it from? My father. You purchased it from your father? Yes, he made the original purchase and said I could just uh, give him the money, which I did. Okay. And how much did you give him for the mattress? $3,000. That's show, not correct. Show me that you gave him $3,000. I can't figure that you had saved $3,000. I gave him that to purchase the mattress because that was the time I was purchasing my car. How can you purchase a car? You don't work. You don't work. The first this one doesn't tell me anything. Transaction this that just doesn't, to this doesn't tell me anything. You want to tell me that tells me nothing. You want to give that to her. I would have to find credible, Miss Irwin, that you had managed to save from your job that you had for three months while you claim you were paying your father rent $3,000. It was the leftover money from me purchasing my car. Oh, that, I don't believe that. For one second. Okay, you want to tell me about the mattress, sir? Okay, simply put, I got one for myself uh, when she wasn't living with me, and the mattress I furnished her with is a floor model. He gave me a good deal on it. I think it retails about 3500 I got it for 2300 My daughter and I did have an agreement that she could purchase the mattress for $1,800. However, as you may have figured out, that did not occur. And this was after she moved back in October or when she was... Yep. Yes, it was. After she moved back in October? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. The mattress is staying where it is. Okay. Now let's go to dresser, nightstand, and TV. So you acknowledge that none of those things you purchased, bed, dresser, nightstand, and TV? No, I did not purchase them. Okay. Now that's your father's. He threw out my clothes, shoes, and jewelry. Now, you were evicted. Yes. Was it an actual eviction? Did marshals come to the house? Um, no. I got served the eviction notice on June 30th. He illegally locked me No, 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 no. no. June 30th. Yes. So on June 30th, you were given an eviction notice that said that you had to be out on what date? In 30 days. Okay. So far, is that correct, Mr. Irwin? It's fairly correct. I do have the 30-day no-cause notice to quit that she was oh. served. Okay. And but on it... what date did you leave? On Ju July 1st, because he had thrown a camera Just a second. Boyfriend. You left on July 1st? Yes. Tell me how you left. I packed a small bag and I had left. You packed a small bag that contained what? A few of my clothes and whatever I could grab for a few nights. And where did you go? To my boyfriend's house. So you went to Corey's house? Yes. Do you have a laptop? I do not. Do you have a phone? Yes, I do. Did you take the phone? Yes, I did. You took some clothes with you and you knew that, that you had an eviction notice, correct? Yes. Tell me what jewelry you allege your father threw out. He threw out my necklace my boyfriend had bought me. He okay. threw out... Which boyfriend? Uh, this boyfriend, Corey. Tell me about the necklace. Uh, he had purchased it for my birthday. Okay. Stand up, Corey. Tell me about the necklace you purchased. Uh, I purchased it from K Jewelers. 
I had purchased it for about $250. Okay, when? On her birthday, just a little before. When's that. her birthday? Uh, February 20th. Did she wear the necklace? Yes. Every day? Uh, no, just on occasions, whenever we'd go out and do stuff and all that. When she came to your house with her bag, did you ever see the necklace again? No, I did not, Your Honor. Do you know where this necklace is? I do not. Did you throw away a necklace? I guess anything's possible because when she left and sent me the have a nice rest of your life text, it looked like a hoarder's room. So I guess anything could have been in there. Who cleaned it up? I did. Didn't see a necklace? Didn't see a necklace. Okay. Were you looking for anything of value? I wasn't looking for anything. To me, it looked like old clothes that probably hadn't been worn in years. Okay. I just wanted to okay, clear up the room. Okay, fine. Have a seat. Other than that necklace, what other jewelry did you have? I had some rings I purchased from Ojai, California on a trip I previously took for my dad. Okay. What else? You took a bag of clothes. What specific? Because you had jewelry, shoes. I assume you took some shoes with you because no, you were going to be did there. No, I But you were wearing a pair of shoes. Yes, I was. Oh, I was okay. wearing my old shoes. Okay. When you got rid of all of the stuff, Mr. Irwin, you didn't go through any of it? No, I did not. Did you give her any notice that she had 10 days, two weeks to get her stuff? Uh, I did not give her notice. On what date did you dispose of all of her stuff? Uh, it would have been around July 20th, about 20 days after or so. Okay. Well, but even according to your eviction notice, she had 30 days to vacate. Well, if you read the actual eviction notice, it's five days. After five days, you have to file another part of the eviction notice, which is unlawful detainer, meaning that she is now there illegally. So she left within the five days okay. willfully. I'm 19 years old, and I want to live to be 79. And right now, that doesn't look good for you. I'm telling you, you look troubled and older than your years. Nineteen-year-old Isabel Irwin has accused her father, Neil Irwin, of throwing out her personal property. Neil claims he paid for Isabel's belongings. Okay, so you didn't file the next step. I did not. So she left within five days. That was the yes. thing. And she just left the place a mess. Is a mess, that... yes. Okay, who is this? This is my mother, Janice Leonard. Could you stand up, please, for a moment? Miss Leonard, how many grandkids do you have? Well, from Neil to I have six. Did you and Miss Irwin get along? Oh, yes. She came to... We lived in I Idaho at the time. I had an equestrian center. So every summer she would be there all summer long. We taught her to ride. She had the best horses. She jumped. She was a fantastic rider. But as the years went on, it was just getting more difficult. When she turned 14, her behavior changed. Drastically. Can you describe, I know that you moved back to where your son lived. And according to the answer, he gave you a key to the house. He was in Las Vegas on a trip. That's correct. Could you describe when you went into the house what Miss Irwin's room looked like? Every time I would go over there, the house would be worse every single day. And there was a very strong, pungent smell. So I thought the dogs were going to the bathroom. Her room was a total disaster. There's clothes literally strewn, I don't know how, how tall, but 12 inches maybe. Nothing was ever picked up. And one day before Neil came back, I said, this place is really smelling bad. And later I learned that they were smoking marijuana. They would be in the bedroom and giggling and in the bathroom together. And when I would come, she'd only be there for maybe... 20 minutes and they both would leave. There was no respect, I have to say. I've seen her in action and she can be very nice and very polite, but there's a whole nother side that is actually very scary to the point when she was years ago, 14, my husband and I were locking our bedroom door because we were afraid of her when she stayed. Okay, thank you. Isabel, is that what they call you or they uh, have a sh yes. Isabel, word of advice, caution, you're 19? Yes. You look older. That's not a compliment. You seem like an intelligent young woman. Thank you. But 
I see issues there of blaming everyone else. And it's very possible that your father and your mother and other people share the blame in your issues. That's possible. But at this point in your life, Isabel, you're just starting. And you can either spend your life blaming somebody else, parent, grandparents, siblings, for where you are, or you can say, I have to get myself some help and put a period, because I'm 19 years old, and I want to live to be 79. And right now, that doesn't look good for you. I'm telling you, you look troubled and older than your years. Your father looks better. Your grandmother looks better. They look appropriate to their age and stage and clearer. So I think that you should get some help. I also think, Mr. Irwin, there were things in her room, and I believe me, I have seen rooms like that. You know, I have been involved with lots of kids and grandchildren. Most of them grow up, and once they get a place of their own, they walk around with a bottle of Windex and bounty and clean up after everybody's fingerprints. But if they're living in their parents' house or their grandparents' house, they live like slobs. Sometimes that never changes. But, you know, there's messy. And then there is dysfunctional. And what you are describing is dysfunctional. And I think if your daughter was honest, she would look and she would say, that's dysfunctional. You were in the room, Corey? Yes, Your Honor. Stand up. Would you describe your girlfriend's room in her father's house as evidence of being dysfunctional? Um... Uh, not an um. Right here, Corey. Okay. Does her room look like your room? No, it does not, Your Honor. Would your mother permit your room to look like her room? Uh... Oh, it's not an answer, Corey. Would your mother permit your room where you, that you're sharing to look like the room that was in his house where your girlfriend lived and you stayed occasionally? No, Your Honor. No. Okay, sit down. You should have looked for the necklace. He gave me an honest answer to everything that I asked him. So the necklaces was probably mixed in with a load of garbage that was there. To say the least. That was accumulated, it was like a hoarder. So I'm Your awarding Honor, you. I have a you video To your the boyfriend, room. $250 to go and buy her a new necklace. Thank you very much, this case is over. Thank you, Your Honor. This court is adjourned. I agree with the judge's decision 100%. I think it was very fair. I think it wasn't fair. She has so much more potential than what she's doing right now. I was just trying to get my belongings, and he literally just never wanted me to do it. She's a great kid, and in all reality, she's just making some wrong decisions right now. I made any really bad decisions. It's all been influenced by my father. You know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I uh, hope she grows up and I love her. I know I need to grow up, but he evicted me, uh, gave me two days, and I didn't want to make my dad mad. I hope you weren't talking about me when you were thinking of your grandchildren keeping messy rooms. I try and be neat and nice and organized. Well, I wasn't thinking about you today <laughs> as a law school graduate, but I do remember when you he were in college and, and you were staying with us rather than in the dorm, keeping your door closed because it looked like somebody <laughs> hit your room with a mix master. <laughs> Maybe just a few too many open suitcases, I guess. Yeah, open, unpacked suitcases. <laughs> but got older and more respectful, and then you had your own apartment, and I remember visiting your apartment, and I said, who is it that lives here? <laughs> I couldn't figure out who lives here. It's not the same person who lived with me. <laughs> It's but, a maturity thing, and I think I was shocked to see that she was only 19 years old, in line with what you said to her, that she looks older beyond her years, and some difficulty can do that to you, but you have to take accountability and do what you can to make your life organized and set yourself up for success. That, you know, all that is true. I'm not sure that she has all the tools to do that, and I don't know if she has anybody there to guide her. It's too bad because she seems like an intelligent young woman mm -hmm. and her grandmother certainly portrayed a picture of a child who was accomplished when she was younger and then something happened, yeah. you know. I hope she turns it around. I hope she turns it around. I hope it's not other. Princess Davis is suing photographer Tavares Long for breaking their photo shoot agreement. Court come to order, all rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2013, Davis versus Long. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Davis, what do you do for a living? I'm a language interpreter. For whom? 
for hospitals or law offices. Is it your own business? Yes. What languages do you speak? Spanish and Portuguese. Tell me how you met Mr. Long, who was a photographer. I met Mr. Long um, as part of a social cycling group that I'm a part of. And so they have weekly cycling rides, and he's always there, and I'm usually there, too. So according to what I read in your complaint, you got to chatting with Mr. Long, and sometime in October of 2021, so not quite a year ago, the two of you discussed him taking photographs of you to be used on his website, on his business website. That's a photography website, sir? Yeah, well, we didn't discuss, you know, we just discussed doing a photo shoot together. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, don't, yeah, yes, ma'am. Don't say no unless, you know. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. I already live with people who <laughs> say no just to say no. <laughs> you discussed taking photographs of her... Yes, ma'am. ...for your website, doing a photo shoot, and in exchange for that, she would get a free copy of the photographs. That's what you discussed? Yes. At that a fair statement? Yes. Is that a fair statement? Of, of some of the photos, yes. Well, no, well, we I don't think that you said some of the photos. You, mm-hmm. you said, no. you sit for a photo shoot for me that I can use the pictures on my website. That's not what... Well, are you in the business of photography? Yes, ma'am. Is that how you make your living? Yes, ma'am. People paying you to take pictures of their wedding, communion, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Right? Mm-hmm. Anything else? <laughs> Birthday parties. Uh, and in order to do that, you have to show off your best work. Yes. And if you ask a model to do that so that you could use a model, just as you get paid for your work, so would the model. Right. So what you did with her was barter. You bartered her time in sitting for a shoot for her to get something in return, which were copies of the photographs. That doesn't mean that she owns them. You were free to use them on your web page, on your business web page. Am I outlining your case? Yes, more or less. Okay, so now I will summarize what the case is about. According to what I've read, the two of you looked at the photographs and you picked out about 30 that you liked, according to somebody. He got you the 30 pictures, but then you saw a picture, don't shake it, you saw a picture that you didn't have that was posted on his website that he hadn't given you. Well, he hadn't given me any of the pictures. He, I was able to view some. With 30 photographs downloaded so that you could see them on your computer? No, he sent me a Google Drive link for 29 photos. Okay. That Do I couldn't just... download. I could only view. Okay. Did you tell him that you couldn't download them? Yes. Did he repair that? No. So now you want to be compensated to the tune of... $2,500 for using your pictures on social media. Uh, That's what you ask for in your case. Yes, for using them to promote his business. That's and okay. Well, you knew he was yes, going... I did. Okay, Miss Davis, you knew that he was going to use the photographs to promote his business. That was your contract. Mm-hmm. That's not uh-huh. That's a yes. Yes, ma'am. That was your contract. Your complaint is that he did not fulfill his entire end of the bargain by getting you copies of all the pictures. Yes. Okay. And you have a nonsense counterclaim, Mr. Long, Mm -hmm. because you want money for compensation for a photo shoot. That was never... No. Well, what I want money for is is a nonsense counterclaim for a nonsense suit. No, no, no. What I I want money for is if she wants me... Because she actually... Well, I want you to take down every photo and delete everything you have. Well, if you want to, that means if you want to own the rights to the photos, this is what it's going to cost you. Not just a second. She doesn't want all the rights to the photos. She can't... That's what she called me saying. Okay. Mm. She... But she can't modify the agreement. Agree. If I find, which seems absolutely logical, and I don't know why you just wouldn't do it, give her the photographs which you bargained for so that she got copies of them in exchange for you using them on social media. That seems to be perfectly simple, Mr. Long. Did she ever notify you that she couldn't download the 29? You know what she notified me? So in May of this year, which is Women History Month, I was daily, I, I, you know, post some photos of women I took photos of and just kind of, like, honor them for Women History Month. So on, like, May 5th, with 5th day of, of Women History Slow Month, down. I posted... Slow down. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. So I posted three photos of her to say, hey, I want to honor, you know, a friend of mine. It's Women History Month. You know, just kind of just, you know, I thought it was a nice thing. So then uh, 
she calls me. I was picking my daughter from school. Well, she emailed me. I don't know if she emailed me Does first. Does this have school. something really important to do with Ye this case? Yes, yes. Oh, well, I'll get there, please. Yes, I'm not interested in right, right, your right. daughter so, up in school. So, but you asked me when did she notify me. So, I, five months later, she notified me in May. The photo shoot was in November. So? So, but you asked me when did she notify me. It was, she told me this right as all of this, uh, as she wanted to, to Mr. start Long, an argument. Mr. Long, yes, you can talk from today till tomorrow. I know. What I'm the, long What the agreement yes, is clear. She sat for you. How long was the photo shoot? Almost, Don't look at me. How long was the photo shoot? Almost five hours. How long was the photo shoot, Mr. Long? No, it was about, no, no. about three hours. About three hours. Okay, so anywhere between three and five hours. Ma'am. Anywhere between three and five hours. Well, it definitely wasn't five. She said... It was one time, so it got dark early. We were outside at uh, Cascade Nature Preserve, so... I'm getting it was, actually it was, so it was, bored... I know, with I'm you. Sorry, but yeah. It Anywhere was, between it was. three and five hours. And if you shot a hundred pictures during that time? Oh no, or much more. So so we So did, how uh, many pictures did you shoot? Probably three, four hundred. I okay. mean it was a lot. Just so, a step. Mm -hmm. Not so. No, yeah, well, because this is important, you know. So what happened is is that we did a lot of motion shots. So which means that I put the camera in high continuous shutter mode. So while she's moving, I'm capturing just I'm just Taking photos, right? And then we choose them out of which out of which motion that look best. Oh, you know? no, just a second. Yes, ma'am. You have to send her the copies of the photographs that you took. That was an agreement, Your Honor. Because why would I send you every photo? And I'm going to have work out there with my name on it. That something because you blinked and we moving. We taking action shots. I'm, you know, I'm never, just a second. Never do you think? Do you photo. think? Hey. Yes, ma'am. Do you think? that this woman is going to put out a photograph anywhere that looks terrible of her. Yeah. See, <laughs> that would be... Right. That would be ridiculous. See, we, have, we have a difference in, in opinion, right? She may think this is a nice one. And I, as a photographer, I'm like... And another photographer sees it, they're like, this is kind of garbage, right? And so I, I'm never going to give somebody something that I, I wouldn't approve of myself. Oh, ever. yes. Well, what I'm telling you, Mr. Long, was that was not your agreement. Yes. You, Okay, then I'm going to, in 30 seconds, mm -hmm. you commiserating with each other from this cycle group, whatever it was, and I want you to tell me your memory of the discussion with the plaintiff about the photographs, about her sitting for you for a photo shoot. Then I'm going to hear hers. Quickly, what is your memory of the discussion, initial discussion that you had with her over her sitting for a photo shoot? Don't make things up. No. Mr. Long, then no, just no, this, tell me. This is factual. I'm then just proof. tell me. Yes. So we we were at a social gathering. It was um, a holiday party for one of the groups that we, we are part of, right? So we were at this bar called Handlebar in Atlanta, and we were talking, and I was doing some shooting inside of the party, right? And she says, hey... We ought to shoot together sometime. That's not true. Yes, Just a yes, second. Yes, You're going to have a chance. Don't interrupt him. Just keep going. And yes. you understand, yes, I know the difference between yes, rain and someone peeing on my leg. Right. And I just know the difference. I've never peed on Okay. Let's right. move on. Right. And so uh, we were at this... At so you were at a party. Hey, you're taking pictures. And she said to you, hey... Mm -hmm. Come on, let's go. Yes. Hey, we should do a shoot together sometime. Okay. And I was like, that would be cool. Okay. Right? And then so she reached out to me. Um, so the Braves won the National Se the World Series last year. She reached out to me a little before the Braves won the National World Series and said, hey, you know, would this day be good? And I was like, well, it's going to be kind of cold. This is going to be going on. So the day that the Braves, the World Series parade was, which was November 3rd. Right, November 3rd is the day that we shot because after the brace, I went and met her. Just a second. At, Do you have any idea how disinterested I am in these I facts? I know, I know, but... I, okay. Just, Mr. Long, Mr. Long, yeah. before she got there, you had an arrangement, and if you can't tell it to me in a cogent way, I'm going to ask her and I'm going to believe her. Do you understand? I do. I'm looking for your version of the contract. Right. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So just give it to me. I don't care who was playing baseball. I don't care who was in the finals. It means nothing to me. Princess Davis claims photographer Tavares Long broke their photo shoot agreement. Tavares is countersuing 
saying Princess owes him for the rights to the pictures. Okay, you're at a bar, yes. you're taking some pictures. Yes. You're taking some pictures. She comes over to you. She said, How about a photo shoot? You say, Fine. Yes. I'm looking for your version of the contract. Right. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So just give it to me. I don't care who was playing baseball. I don't care who was in the finals. It means nothing to me. Yes, ma'am. Just tell me the contract that you had with her. There had to be a contract. Well, other than us verbally, there was no written contract. And that doesn't yeah. have to be a oh, written so, so contract. So you want just what we verbally said? Yes. So then after that, we agreed to, to, to meet up, right? And then once we finished shooting, because we never discussed how many photos were going to be sent, right, until we, we actually looked at the photos together, Yana. We looked at the photos. She said, oh, no, I don't like this one because there's like something... Just a second. Mm -hmm. You looked at the photos on the date of the shoot? No. Well, we, when? well, she looked at some of them on the camera, like, but not every photo that on the uh, camera. But when it, did it you was, look? Oh, I sent it to her on November six. I emailed her. So November third is when we shot. November six is when I sent her the photos. How many did you send her? Twenty nine. Okay, but you didn't send her all of them. No, because that wasn't an agreement. Well, I didn't hear the agreement. I didn't hear anything about because an agreement. We, we didn't have a specific I didn't, number. I didn't hear anything about an agreement. That was in the... Okay, good. Name. Now, now yeah. you have to be quiet. Yes, ma'am. Now, tell me your version. Make sure that I get exactly the case. Okay. On October uh, 15th, uh, we were both at a holiday event from one of our social groups, and he actually came up to me. And he was like, you're beautiful. I would love to shoot you. I'm trying to build up my photography practice. Um, and I was like, OK, what do you want to do? Like a, you know, barter thing where I get a copy of all the pictures and you can use them to promote. And he was like, yeah. He was like, we can talk about it this week. Oh, so he, what he said to us, yeah, we can talk about it this week. Mm -hmm. Keep going. No, and we had Keep another going. phone call. Keep going. To solidify that I would get a copy. No, just a, no, 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 oh, no, no. Don't say right. solidify. Solidify is a conclusion. OK. What I want you to tell me is after that meeting, you had another conversation. Yes. Did you call him or did he call you? I called him. Yes. And I said, okay, so I know you had talked about the shoot. Like, what, what were you interested in doing? I know you talked about the barter. And he was like, yeah, I'm building up my practice. I would love to shoot you. And I asked him, I said, okay, so I'm going to get a copy of all the pictures, right? Yeah, you'll get a copy of all oh the pictures. God. I asked him then, I said, do you have a makeup artist? Because I've done this agreement before she with other lying. photographers. Okay. I, would, I would like you to be quiet. Agreement. Hey, okay. I would like you to be quiet. I will. This is a pretty standard agreement with no, 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 models. Listen. Okay, I'll go back to it. Let's, so, I'm so, not interested in that or the Atlanta Braves. Yes. So basically what it was is I would get a copy of all the pictures. I would also do... Not ba I don't want to hear basically. I want to hear what okay. you said to him and what he said to okay, you. I, said, I don't want to hear anything else. I said... And so I now will, you're shocked. And I will get a copy now, of all the pictures just, just that he Just to see, keep saying it again. I heard you the first okay. time that you would sit and you would get a copy of the pictures. Yes. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. As I can imagine him saying mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, but I, okay. I did. You get an A for annoying. Mm. <laughs> Which is not where you want to be here. It's not. Because this is really a very, very simple situation. Yes. Really simple. Of the pictures that you took of her, be very careful, because she has it. Of the pictures, the 29 pictures that you sent to her, did those 29 pictures contain all of the pictures that you ever put up on your website? Or did you use any of the other pictures that you took from the photo shoot on your website? Do you understand my question, I Mr. Do. Long? I do. Did you use any photos other than the 29? That's either a yes or a no. She told me, yes, no, there's just one. Just a second. That's, that's, she told me. That's what she told me. Well, I'm Mr. Just, Long, yeah. not she told me. When you had a conversation with her subsequently, and she said to you, I saw you put a picture up on your website. It wasn't one of the ones you sent to me. A normal person who is a photographer, mm -hmm. who is now having a dispute, would go back to the photographs and see which picture she was talking about and look to see the 29 pictures that you sent. And you would said, yes, it was one of the 29 pictures that I sent to you. My question is a simple one. Were any pictures that were not turned over to her ever used on your website? So I, 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 I want to be honest with you, right? So no, this, I want that's either right? a yes or a no. Right, well, this, this is the thing. So no, there's this no whole thing. conversation that she's Ms. talking Long, about, Mr. Long, about Mr. Long, Mr. Long, the there's photos? no thing. Yeah. There's no thing okay. to my question. All right. There's either a yes or a no. Were 
any photographs other than the 29 you sent her ever put up on your website? Not to my recollection, because... Okay, I, I, yeah. just a sec, so yeah. the answer is not to your recollection. Now I'll come back to you, Ms. Davis. Mm -hmm. You did receive viewing copies of 29 photographs. Viewing Co only copies, yes. Not Rece copies, but access to a file, yes. Okay, and there came a time when, according to you, you saw a picture on his website that was not a picture that you had had a viewing copy of. Yes. Do you have that? Yes. Give me one second. Where is my... And then the communication with him, if you have any communication about that I do. photograph. Is this all clear to you, Whitney, this case? Is this clear to you? Is there anything that needs clearing up? Okay, that you is pretty clear. a text <laughs> message. Clear. This one was the specific one that I didn't recognize. I had seen No, it. I don't want to know that you recognize it. They, oh. I want a picture that was not within the 29 photographs yeah. that he sent to you, and then any communication with him that you have via text message. That's the text message. That's a lovely photograph. Thank you. Yes, yeah, you have it for you. Text messages. You can also help. Oh. Happy... Monday sent you all the photos you liked back when we took them. Okay, so what she's saying to you here is that she feels very uncomfortable about you having pictures of her that she doesn't have copies of and having them accessible to you to post. I just want to finish this back and forth. Yes, ma'am. She does say, if you don't want to send her all the pictures, just delete them all from whatever hard drive you have and take her pictures down from any social media. Did you do either one of those things? That's what this back and forth seems to talk about. I no. didn't, and I was, I was okay. never going to do it. Because... Okay. Okay. Just a second. I, I, I didn't ask you if the answer is no. Okay, no. Where are the photographs now, Mr. Long? The, the photographs, um, I have, uh, I use, you know, uh, scan this, so they're on the SD card. So very easy to make another one and just give her a copy, is that right? No. What, it's hard? Is that hard, Sarah, to make a copy of that memory chip? What do you have to do? I don't think so. I mean, I've seen people do that before. They plug something in, they plug something in at the other end. And then right. one transfers to the right. other. Am I wrong? It's not right. hard, no. What? It's not. I think he's, way, way... he's saying it's not impossible. He's oh, just not, not going to do it. Nothing's impossible. But one, I don't send all photos to anyone. I've never sent every photo that I've taken of someone. I've, I've never done it. Then, Mr. Long, I don't care what you've never done. Right. Then, shh. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try listening? Well, the one that tends to benefit the most from the contract, business-wise, is you. You see, these photographs are not her business. Do you want to use these photos for her business? I, I, do you see my mouth moving? Yes, ma'am. Why don't you be quiet and just listen? Princess Davis has accused photographer Tavares Long of withholding photos from their photo shoot. Tavares says he can keep the photos he chooses because he owns them. Okay, if there is ambiguity in an oral contract, mm -hmm. two things should happen. First of all, the one that tends to benefit the most from the contract business-wise mm -hmm. is you. That's not her business. You see, these photographs are not her business. She does... You want to use these photos does, for her business. I, I, do you see my mouth moving? Yes, ma'am. She works as an interpreter. So she doesn't need for her job as an interpreter photographs like this. They're nice to have, nice to have to look through a book, nice to have professional photographs yeah. taken. I know Sarah loves to do that. All right. But this is your business. It is. And if you put up, why don't you be quiet and just listen? If you put her picture up on your website, you're the professional at photography so that you have to create a contract, you, not her. This is a sport for her. This is social. She models, you. She said, she said she models and she wants something for her portfolio. She <laughs> may want something, which is why she sat for you. She doesn't have the photograph, so you have two choices. Mm -hmm. Either you give her a copy of that drive that you have. You still own the pictures. Anytime that she wants to use the pictures, you have to get credit for the pictures. Yeah, you know, I'm never going to give somebody every photo because I don't want any work out there that is not 
standard for my, my, my business to be out there and somebody posted, we took action shots. I'm not giving you shots and you blinking. Mr. You Long, like, it's Mr. Yeah, Long. Mr. Long, Mr. Long. No. Mr. Long, you came here and signed a document before you came into court yes. today that you were going to be bound by any decision that I made. Mm -hmm. If you read the contract that you signed, mm -hmm. that's what it said. Okay. So, where do you come from? What city and state? Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. And how did you get here? Flu. Yeah. And who paid for that? I'm assuming you did. Right. And when you got here, you stayed in a hotel. Mm hmm And I assume you want to go home to I Atlanta. Do. I do. Eventually. Hold on. You go. <laughs> no. I assume. And when you came here, sir, mm -hmm. you also got a fee, an appearance fee. Is that correct? Correct. Right. And how much did you get as an appearance fee for trying your case before me? I can disclose that. What? Disclose oh, it? Well, I'm asking you a question. Well, well, You're on the road. I thought you wasn't No, listen to me. Okay. Don't look at her. Okay. Listen to me. All right. How much of an appearance fee are you being paid to have your case tried before me? $300. $300. And you'd like that $300? I mean, yeah. What? Yes, I would. Yeah. So this is what I'm telling you. I'm holding you $300 until she gets a copy of the hard drive with the photographs on it. Okay. So if you don't give it to her, it's going to cost you at least 300 bucks. You're just lucky I'm not taking your airline ticket as well. Is <laughs> when a contract that is verbal is interpreted, because there may or may not be a meeting of the minds in a verbal contract, mm -hmm. but it seems to me that you were, and you're the business professional, so you're loosey-goosey. You sit for me, and I want to use it for my website. Can I get copies of the photos? Yes, I can get yeah, copies. Yeah, happened. yeah, you can get copies right. of the photo. Then you sent her copies of the photos, and then you took down the site. It's not my fault that you didn't do anything. So this is, this is my judgment. She gets copies of the photo shoot that was conducted in November of 2021. She gets copies of those photographs. Anytime she wants to use any of those photographs for anything, any publicity, it has to have your name on it, so send it to her, who the photographer was, and you have to get credit for it. You own the photographs. They are your photographs, but she gets copies of them because I cannot ascertain, other than listening to you, I can actually hear you saying, sure, 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 you're going to get copies, you're going to get copies, and then you selected the ones well, sure you that you that wanted to select. Anyway, that's my judgment. That's my judgment. You get copy, your counterclaims dismissed. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I don't agree with it. I'm glad that it's over. No photographer is ever going to send somebody 100% of any photo that they took. He owed me those photos. That was our agreement. I don't want work out there that doesn't represent me. I don't understand why anyone would want to hold photos from somebody that was doing them a favor. It just changed who I do business with. I mean, it's just like the judge said, why would I put a bad photo of myself in public? What they may believe is good may not be what I believe is good. It makes no sense. He's just a total liar. I thought I was doing something for a friend and for free. We weren't really friends. We were like social. Like, he's inflating that. Now, they don't matter if it's free or not, I do put it in writing. Just go to a different photographer. Don't you waste your time. I think we have a difference of opinion on that one. Okay. My roommate from college is a professional photographer who has done sort of a similar arrangement with me, and I've learned a lot from her about the ins and outs of the photography business. And I know that a big problem for photographers is they don't want the raw, unedited, like the defendant was explaining, photos of out of, say, four or 500 out in the world if they haven't put their photographer edit or touch on it yet, which mm -hmm. I can understand if that's their business. So I, if I were ruling, I would have maybe, it's hard to split the baby in half per se, but said 50 photos out of, you know, she only received the 29. So maybe if he had edited up to his standards, 50 of the photos and delivered her downloadable versions. But I understand that sort of rewriting history from a loosey goosey type. Well, it's of rewriting a contract. It is. And I actually see your point, but that would have required a lot of work for him. Yeah, but it, he is the businessman. He should have had the contract to begin with. Well, and if that's you're true. going to be making statements to someone that you're going to give them all the photos, even though that's against what I know to be standard practice, practice. standard practice, then you're sort of out of luck. Then you're going to have unedited photos with your name attached to them. And as a photographer, you should really have more contracts in place for situations like this. With a clear understanding by both parties, 
Yeah, th that's his business, and he really wanted to use them for business. Mm -hmm. So he should have had a more stable written contract that I could interpret. Other than that, I was really comfortable with an all or nothing. Yeah. Either if you're going to use them and you've already used them on the website, a reasonable view of both their testimonies was he said, sure, yeah, you'll get copies, mm -hmm. and then later gave her just a yeah. select few. But I actually understand now the standard in practice, and I could have offered that as an alternative. Yeah. Okay, you should... Sandra Duenas is suing exotic pet store owner Brian Chow for money from a snake breeding business. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case number 212, Duenas versus Cho. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Duenas, it looks to me from your papers that you decided to go into a business with someone. Yes. With whom? With the defendant, Bryant Chow. And you know him how? He's a family friend. And you know what his business is? Yes. What is his business? He currently sells uh, reticulated pythons, snakes, exotic animals, uh, monitors, lizards. And you like those things? My ex-boyfriend did. Did you? Uh, I was more for the investment part. Okay. I was so, the investor at the time. At the time, you reached out to this family friend who was in the exotic snake business. Your idea was to create a business. Uh, no, Your Honor. It was actually the defendant's idea. He I don't care whose idea it was. Your idea was to create a business with your ex-boyfriend. I agreed to the business, but it well, wasn't our idea. Whether you agreed to the business or not, you invested money yes. in the business. Yes which means that unless there's something wrong with you, and I see that there is not, you wanted to go into business with the defendant. Yes. So let's be easy. Okay. And at the time that you wanted to go into business with the defendant, I'll get to what the nature of that business was in a second. I know it had something to do with that wonderful-looking snake. You had a boyfriend. Yes. And the boyfriend liked snakes. Yes. And you went along with the ride. Yes. What month and year were you still with the boyfriend when you decided to go into the business, which you will explain to me? Back in November of 2019. So right before COVID? Yes. What was your boyfriend doing at the time? He was working at an airport. And he and Mr. Cho were friends? Yes. How long had you known him? Two, three weeks, Your Honor. Where did you meet him? He came into my store and acquired a... Uh, uh, I didn't ask you anything. That's how you met him? Yes. I'm going to get through this case and get this lovely yes. thing out of the courtroom as quickly as I possibly can. <laughs> well, some people find them exotic and gorgeous. I find them a little bit squirmy. So in November 2019, boyfriend and you decided to go into the business, explain the business that you invested in. I invested on five reticulated pythons, one male and four females. That was the original deal. And what were you going to do with them? Mr. Brian Chow was going to have it in his shop, and um, together we were going to breed them and make a profit out of them. So the intention was never for you to take these pythons to your residence? No. And you understood that? No. They're buying the snake, Your Honor. Okay. How much were the five snakes? In total, it was $10,000, plus the feeding and the cages that he claimed that the snakes needed. Was it your agreement that for $10,000, Ms. Duenas and the boyfriend were going to buy one male snake and four females? They decided to buy two snakes. Well, when was that decision made, sir? A week after I met him, because they... When you went into the shop, did you ultimately decide on one male, one female? No, so how it is, Your Honor, is he knew my ex-boyfriend prior to the business five years ago. He sold him a exotic Australian monitor lizard. Okay, what I want you to tell me is, did there come a time when the arrangement changed, so instead of one male and four females, you were supposed to get one male and one female? No, Your Honor. The whole way, it was supposed to be one male and four females. Do you have any sort of a receipt for that? We have Instagram conversations. Do you have that? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it. One male, four females. The guy's asking 15000 for all. And then he says, I'll drop it to 12. Then somebody, I don't have 12 now. 
I just spent a lot on my monitor. Let's go the rest. Okay, so he said, I don't have that money now. He says, I'm getting 16 lace monitors. You remember that yes. discussion? And then that's a big investment for me right now. I'm saving up to get a house, but I'm down to breed my monitor with any of your monitors. Keep going. So far, I don't have a contract. And then somebody says, no, you pay half and I pay half. Who wrote that? He did. No, you pay half and I pay half. Then you say 6000 I'm short 6000 I want to get them, but I'm low on cash till next month. And that's from you. That's from the reptile. Uh, I had to say it, Your Honor. OK. If I invest half with you, what will be my return and in how long? Think about it. That will be the baby's mix price. JTK Reptiles, that's yeah. you. Somebody's on their way. That's you and your boyfriend? Yes. We were on our way to give him the money. And how much money were you going to give him? We gave him the first time 6000 and then 4000 the total of $10,000. You received that? Yes, Your Honor. And what did you purchase with the $10,000? If you look at the message from there, what she showed you is they pay half of the five snake. It means they get two of the snake, and I get two of the snake. They... They've been lying to you guys since day one. They want to purchase two snake. Then I told them, like, if you look at the message, I can use my mail to breed it to your female. It's an investment for you guys, not for us. It's no us. It's not with them at all. Mr. Cho, were they supposed to take possession of the snakes? They're supposed to pick up the snake. That's why they come to the store with it. Which snakes were they supposed to take possession of? One right here and one... There. Is that a male or a female? This is the female. Has she had babies yet? No, I don't breed her because she don't belong to me. And how old is she? Right now, she should be about six years old, going seven. How long do they live? Over 30 to 40 years. Depends on how you take care of them, like I take care of them. And there's another one outside the yes. courtroom that's the same as this one, yes. also a female? Yes. And you gave them the $10,000. He acknowledges the $10,000. So we have a verbal contract that you were going to pay for some snakes. He was going to order the snakes yes. for you, which he did. And that was accomplished. And the payment for the snakes was done on what date, the first payment? Approximately in November of 2019. And when was the next $4,000 payment? The same month, I would say like a week. Good. And when did you order the snakes, Mr. Chow? Right after I get the, the tenth. Yeah, because I cannot just acquire the animal without the payment. Okay, so now you've got the payment and you order the animals. Yes. On what date do they arrive? Two days after. Their FedEx delivered to my shop. And when did you notify the plaintiff that they were there? The day that they came. I tell them the snake is So it was for. also in November, sometime yes. in November. And when did they arrive? The snake no. arrived. Oh. The plaintiff and the boyfriend. They arrived a week after I notify the boyfriend. Okay. Now, Ms. Duenas, a week later you went to the shop. And what happened when you went to the shop? Now he's got $10,000 and he's got two snakes. I just want to clarify, Your Honor, that we even gave him money for the tanks because here in the conversations it says that he can't continue having them in tubs. So he needs us to give him money to invest, to buy the tanks, to house the snakes. So our original plan was for him to keep the snakes because he has the shop. We, at the time, lived in an apartment. He was well aware of this, that we couldn't okay. have big snakes in our apartment. He says no, you say yes. I'm not sure how I can resolve that. I'm trying to simplify this contract. And you said you recorded all this. Yes. I'd like to see it. All right, watch out. Come back away. I told you, don't play with my money. What are you doing? What do you mean? He owes me money. I don't care. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Cassandra Duenas claims exotic pet store owner Brian Chow owes her money for a snake breeding business. Brian says Cassandra changed her mind about the business after he purchased the snakes. 
Okay, part of the contract was fulfilled because you paid him. Then he ordered the snakes. Second part was fulfilled. I want you to tell me what happened when you went to see the snakes. You say to see them. He says to pick them up a week later. So when we went to the shop, Who what went? led us to... Who the, went? My ex-boyfriend and I. What led us to there is because after he obtained the snakes, he was not reaching out back to us. He was uh, Just a week later. Yes. You went to the shop. Mm -hmm. He notified you that the snakes were there. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. Now, you went to the shop for what purpose? Because he switched it and then he said it was two snakes when originally the plan was one male and four females. That one male was going to breed with the four. So right out the back, he lied to us what our agreement was here that he clearly texted us and said four males and one female. So okay. it was five snakes. So we went to and, the but shop. Yeah, but there was a problem there with pricing in the Instagram messages, a suggestion, because some of the texts were unavailable. He said originally they were $15,000. Mm -hmm. And then there was some discussion of $12,000. And then there was some discussion of $6,000. He says he'll pay half and you pay half. And there, I can imagine that there was an, some sort of an agreement for you to keep the snakes if you were going to pay half. No. You were always supposed to give them the snakes. It's Why would you pay half? Then they get the two of the snake, and I get the two of the other snake. It's five of them. And okay. the one that we're going to pretty much, they can have it if they want it, or I can use it when I need it. You mean the male? Yes. So that was the business. Anyway, you went there, and what happened? So I went in recording. My ex-boyfriend told me, hey, record the Don't whole... tell me what your ex-boyfriend told you. Okay. Just tell me. You went in, and okay. what happened? We went in there, and we asked him, hey, we agreed on five snakes. Now you switched up, and you said, now it's two snakes. First, you told us it was... 15,000, then 12,000. You were playing games with us the whole time. And at this point, after a week later that he said that he got the snakes, then he told us it was two snakes. At that point, we were upset because we had planned and we had counted with five snakes. That's why we gave him that ridiculous amount of money. And basically, we didn't want nothing else to do with him. We wanted our money back. And that's what we went for our okay. money back. Just a second. Yes. So you walked in wanting your money back. Yes. Do you have any text messages, Instagram messages, suggesting that before you got there, mm -hmm. you would said to him, we changed our mind, we don't want to be in business with you, we want our money back? No. Nothing? No. He Had wasn't they... reaching out, sorry, Your Honor, he wasn't reaching out to us. He was sending him video calls, he was calling him through text message, my ex-boyfriend. And... I don't care. You paid the money, he got snakes. The question is, you think there's supposed to be more than two? He says, two, more were more money. So the ultimate agreement was for two. So what happened when you went there? You're there with your boyfriend. Yes. And you and say, I want my money back. Mm -hmm. And he says... He says, I don't have the money here. I have two snakes here. Are you telling me that he didn't call you and say your snakes are in? Is that what you're suggesting? Do you have an invoice for these snakes, Mr. Chow? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to see the invoice for the snakes. By the way, your boyfriend has other of these uh, exotic creatures. Wire Is that right? Yeah. The people that I get them. What kind of exotic creatures does he have? One that he sold him, an Australian water monitor from the Philippines. And? He has two rhino iguanas, a pair. He has a, uh, I don't know the name, but it changes colors. Mr. Chow. Yes. This is a wire transfer, May 24th, 2018. And the date of this wire transfer is August of 2018. And those are for the lace monitor that... that dip are these lace monitors? Yes. Sorry, Your Honor, these are not lace monitors. These are reticulated pythons. These are not monitors. Monitors are lizards. These are snakes. Lace monitor bell face. Yes, Your Honor. Well, that's not that. No, Your Honor. Well, these are useless. Yes, but that's connected to the rest of what, I, what they did. What does that have to do with these two snakes? What I want to see is when you purchase these yeah, two snakes. Yeah, I don't snakes. have it, Your Honor. I'm well, sorry. get it. What I do you mean you don't have it? I left it at home. I'm so sorry. Well, what'd you bring these for? Those are the time that they both got arrested when they went to my shop. Yeah, but you, you now have those back, right? Yes. You have those back. 
So if you had to take documents, why didn't you take the documents for the snakes in question? The lace monitor lizards aren't in question. You have them back. They may have taken them. They were arrested, and you finally got them back. So I don't understand that. I just mistake and grab the wrong paper. Well, Mr. Chow, do you deal with these people regularly, that you buy snakes from them regularly? Not really. It depends on the size of the animal and depends what kind of animal. Well, you have the date of purchase someplace, <sighs> Mr. Chow, and I don't want you to waste my time. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That's why I just said I don't have it, Your Honor. Did they purchase that kind of snake? Yes, Your Honor. Is that correct? It was five snakes, Your Honor. Uh, don't give me five. That type of snake. Oh, yes, the reticulated python, yes. And the one that's outside is the same, correct? Yes. And you did not purchase baby snakes. No. You wanted full-grown snakes because they were a business. You wanted them able to be... Breed. Breeding. Okay. Should have brought the paperwork. And you went in there that day in November because you had changed your mind. Yes, and on top... Yes. Just to see, because you had changed your mind. Yes. That's the answer. You had changed your mind. You can give me a whole bunch of excuses, and you told him you changed your mind, you want your money back. And he said, no, because I ordered the snakes, and I got them in, and they're yours. Contract is completed. I'm merely holding your property. And then there was a kerfuffle. And tell me about the kerfuffle. The issue was that it was going back to what I was saying is, then we asked him as well, can we have, like, receipt? How much did you really pay for them? He no, no, that's them. not your business. That's not your business, how much you really paid for them. He made a deal. You paid him. If he got them for $2,000 and you paid him ten, that's nothing. The kerfuffle, let's draw this down to its most simple English. Mm -hmm. You wanted your money back and you wanted to cancel this contract. Yes, it's just when we arrived, those weren't the snakes that we ordered. These were the breed of it, is the ones that he was putting here on Instagram, which I have, which is not those. So we ordered something and we got something else. So, just, so is what you're telling me, you went there to pick up your... Because now it's changed. You yes. went there to pick up your snakes. Mm -hmm. When you got there, they turned out to be a different... It's br breed. It's like the... Pythons, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're pythons, but it was a different kind of python. Mm -hmm. Now you're telling me because it was a different python, you wanted your money back. Yes, because it's what it wasn't what we paid for. It's like we paid for a Ferrari and we got a Toyota, <laughs> basically. It's basically what... How you, we... you know nothing about pythons, so... You're taking your cues from your boyfriend, because that's his strong suit. Is it yours as well? No, I'm just the investor. Right. So your boyfriend had a conversation with him and said, those aren't the snakes that I ordered. Yes. Okay. And I want my money back. Yes. And you said you recorded all this. Yes. I'd like to see it. And when he broke the glass, where did he take them? He put it in a bin. And is that you carrying them out? Yes, and that's the reason just, why I was just... charged with the robbery, just because I walked out with the item. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's a co-conspirator. Cassandra Duenas is accusing exotic pet store owner Brian Chow of wrongfully keeping money for a snake breeding business. Brian says he fulfilled their agreement and claims Cassandra stole property from his store. And you said you recorded all this? Yes. I'd like to see it. Okay. You just press play. Which one? When? Which one? Oh, right here. And then you press that. This one? Yes. Oh. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. You guys just want to do the money back. Yeah. Um, the 10180 in total, and then um, money on top of that for lending you the money and everything. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, because we didn't see this coming. You, you just kept on giving us a turnaround and around. Oh, no, what? About the mail. Remember that no, you... No, that's why I'm waiting for the mail to be delivered. I don't have the mail. Yeah, but remember you had told us that the guy had it because he had to leave yeah, and he had to get out because he has surgery and all that stuff. Yeah. We gave you the money right there and then. You don't understand what mission we had to go I don't know. I don't mind getting you guys your money back, but I don't have cash right now. You guys got me by surprise. Oh, yeah. yeah, but we're going to have to do it today, though. Like, we, we need our money today. If you want it right now, right now, I don't have it. We told you we want to do a business correct, and you just keep on giving us another day and another day. 
the name. You know that as soon as we give you the money, the snake was going to be here. Yeah, it's not yeah. about me. It's the guy. It's not me. I'm just buying the snake from a different guy. And then another thing where you messed up, you said five snakes for 6000 and you come at me with four and you wasted my money. Yeah, and I told you that he gave me only four snakes, the big giant. Yeah, and why would you waste money if I told you to get the five snakes? If you worry about the last one, I can pay for it. It's a meal that we don't need. But I have to do all this, so I have to get like this for you to do that? No, bro. How can I trust you now? Bro, the four snake is right okay, here. You, no, 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 I, no, I, no, I'm going to go get something. What's wrong with you, bro? I'm just asking you. No, no, let, no let's, let's talk. No, no, we're not going to talk. I told you don't with me. I don't call with you, bro. The, Thing, Why? Because What's that's wrong? Money. Because we gave you a lot of money. Uh, we're talking about over ten thousand dollars, and you're just giving us the runaround. First, I, you told us five snakes. This is what snakes. we can do. I'll take, it. and when you get the money, I'll give it back. Yeah, female too. Oh, no. Oh no. All right. Well, come on, bro. It's, you're looking at a fifteen I grand. Care. I told you, don't play with me. I don't play with All right. you. You don't even open have the up. money right open now. Open them up, man. I got the hot. Open them up. Open them up. I'm trying to talk to you, bro. No, there's no one talking because we gave you the money right here and then. That's unprofessional. You're trying to scam us, yeah. and you don't do open that to people like I that. I didn't. How did I scam they you? Open up before I open it. You're telling me that you don't have the money. I have half of the money because I'm waiting for the snake, bro. If you guys gonna get arrested, there's no arrest. We got. We're just getting. What you yeah. took from us over ten thousand dollars? Trying to talk over to you. We're gonna open it. I tried to. I told you, no, we tried to talk money. to you. I, you're I, telling I us you're gonna money. have the money. I have everything in video. I, I don't okay? care. I, you All can right. record me, bro. Right, so are you gonna you don't it? play sure. with people's money. You can call you me whatever you want. You fifteen thousand dollars. This is fifteen grand. I don't, I don't we don't care. Can you call the cops, please? No, no, no. All right, watch out. Come back with. I told you, don't play with my money. What are you doing? What do you mean? He owes me money. You know? I don't care. Get out. 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 Now I'll play that video, please. That's your boyfriend breaking into the... Yes. Yes. And when he broke the glass and took out whatever lizards he took out with him, where did he take them? You were still with him. Yes, he put it in a bin. And is that you carrying them out? Yes, and that's the reason why I was charged with the robbery, just because I walked out with the item. That's all right. That's fine. (laughs) That's a co-conspirator. Ultimately, the lizards that you took were returned to you. Yes, Your Honor. And it seems, Mr. Chow, at the beginning of this case, I must acknowledge to you that I was sympathetic to your position, that they had ordered snakes. You ordered them. You Mm -hmm. got them. Yes, Your Honor. And then the contract is completed. Uncross your arms. I'm so sorry. But it's clear from the tape that the plaintiff played for me that you acknowledged that you did not fulfill your end of the contract, that you were blaming your inability to fulfill your end of the contract on some third party. Is that what I heard in the tape? I mean, you know, my hearing's not really acute, but that's what you said. I have no control. I can give you back half your money, but I can't give you back all of your money. So the contract was not complete. It was complete because they're supposed to get only two snakes. I didn't see anywhere where it says just two snakes. There was a whole bunch of conversation there about the male snake, and you were supposed to deliver to them the male snake. And you said, I don't have that money now, but I can get that money for you. I can give you the first money. I don't have the second money. It was clear that the contract was not complete, unless you have something to show me that it was. But what I heard, it was not. That doesn't mean that Ms. Duenas has the right to break your property and to steal property that belongs to you. What they do is they come into a court and say, you have my money. The contract was not fulfilled. I want my money back. That's what you do. Are you in the business of breeding snakes for your store? Yes, Your Honor. And if we were to go on the Internet now... Yes, Your Honor. How much would one of those snakes, which is six or seven years old, according to you, sell for? Right now, this size, you're looking at it about six to 7,000 each one. But if you troll the Internet of people who actually like those creatures in their house, for whatever reason, if you put up that snake on the Internet for sale, 
How fast would it take you to sell it? I still say like about a month, a month and a half. They're rare. Yes. Is that right? That's what you're saying. It's rare and is just not a lot of people will acquire that much money. Even though they can sell the babies. And how many babies do they have? In a year, they can do from 30 to 50. And each one of the 30 to 50, you can sell for $3,500. Yes. I suggest you do that. She gets her $10,000 back. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I'm very happy, and I'm happy that she was able to see herself that um, the defendant got caught in multiple lies. They're just a customer. He wasn't truthful since the beginning, um, ever since we invested. They bought a snake. I didn't want to give their, their snake, but they don't want to take it. And it's very sad how nowadays you can't trust in anybody. I think one great lesson that a lot of people can take away from that is you have to know the business that you're investing in. I can appreciate she was sort of doing it for her boyfriend and he had the knowledge about the exotic animals, but that's her money at the end of the day. And if you're going to put your own hard-earned money on the line, it should be a business that you at least put in the time to learn about. To understand. Exactly. So that you don't have to rely on somebody else to make the right decisions. Who's going to be gone tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And your money Who potentially could, and then you're left on your own having to sue and navigate a field that you really know nothing about. Smart. And it was also an example of a contract that was not fully executed. Mm -hmm. I actually thought when I started the case that there was an offer, mm -hmm. an acceptance. You perform, paid the money, got the snakes, yeah. and then you can't change your mind. Yeah. Once you get it, you say, well, I changed my mind, but that's not what happened. Nope. And her video demonstrated that that's not what happened because Mr. Chow started to waft. Well, it's not my fault I don't have your mail. It's another guy, and I would give it to you, but I can't give it to you as soon as I get it, you know. Yeah. So he did not deliver on the contract. So I had very little compulsion other than to say... You don't have to take the snake <laughs> and you get your money back. Yeah.